here. Oh wait, not yet. Wait, one more button. Woohoo! We are live again for another episode of Talk Power BI. Hello, my friends. Hope you're having a great Friday. Uh, Friday is one of my favorite days. I uh, dress up in the morning by now. Yeah. Kids and family know my routine. Oops. Oh wait, not yet. Wait, one more button. All right, took care of that. So uh, yeah, now everybody knows my routine. I, uh, you know, show up downstairs in my bow tie, and they know it's on. All right, so, uh, yep, glad to be here. Mm, let's see. We have our friends on the phone from the Learn Power BI family. We have Mikola, we have Charles, we have Mark, and as always, our co-host, moderator, Steve Ross, is here. I'm going to kick it off, talk about something that's been on our minds, certainly my mind, uh, recently, Real Power BI. And uh, then we'll dive into your Power BI questions. Do say hello. Let me know where you're watching us from. And we have Yugender says hello. Uh, Stefan says hello in German. Oh gosh, uh, guten Tag. That's a good day, right? <laughs> okay, so Yugender saying eagerly waiting since yesterday. All right, well, I, mean, I wait for this moment too, my friend. So I am happy to be here. I'm happy to be hanging out with you and help you in your Power BI journey. Uh, Grace is saying, do you have an email to submit questions? We, I, you know, I'll admit, I, I do get asked that question a few times and uh, we do not, we do not, uh, it, it's just, uh, well, so the last person who asked me that question was, what I said to them was that in running my own business, I've realized that there are, the opportunities are limitless. Right. Opportunities are limitless. So it's such a flip from my days as an employee where opportunities were very limited. You know, only one of us was going to get that promotion. One of us was going to get that big bonus in the five rating or something like that. You know, so it was like that. And you couldn't have convinced me otherwise that opportunities are unlimited. And in business, I definitely feel that way, that opportunities are limitless. So it becomes a question of not, 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 you know, like uh, it, it really boils down to saying no. Now, of course, I don't like the sound of the word no, but I like what my coach said. And he said, Avi, you're not saying no to something. You're saying yes to more of what you need. So in order to help, a, you know, like lots of people, I, I restrict myself and focus myself on how we do that. So we do provide a lot of touch points for our, uh, so you know, so I have structures set up to help my students and my followers. So our students can go on this page or get help page, learnpowerbi.com slash get help. And they have lots of options. They ask the community, live events, uh, talk power BI, uh, they get to call in, get help now. I'm really excited about this. This is a beta, but it is mind blowing. The idea I think is mind blowing. I was really excited. Frankly, the beta was off to a slow start, which got me really nervous. But um, now it's kind of picking up. And of course, there is a paid training option, right? So, um, and then, um, yeah, so this is what our live calendar looks like. And, we, you know, we do some class events. We do, of course, every Friday Talk Power BI. And, um, yep, so, um, uh, so of course, uh, 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 you know, so for, for my followers, it's either Talk Power BI or click on the Contact Me button for bait options, right? So that's, yeah, email is just too challenging. All right, so e yeah, email, I say no to helping over email so that I can say yes to more of this. So I can say yes to being here every Friday and just hanging out with you guys and giving you all the love that I can. All right, so cool. Um, all right, let's see who else is here. Amadeep says hi. Um, Amadeep says I'm from Pune, India. Grace is here. Your videos really made me a pro in Power BI. Yes, that's my goal. So, guys, I'll admit, initially when I started, my channel was Power BI Pro, and I thought I was the Power BI Pro. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> you know, and, like, I, I don't know. So, it, it's not about me. It is not about me. The more I think that, um, it just feels right. It just feels right. So, I realized that Power BI Pro, that name, has nothing to do with me. It's to do with you folks. So, Grace, I'm glad to hear uh, about, from you. Uh, we have another Grace from Mexico. Hola. Uh, Noah is here from Tacoma. Hey, Noah. So, by the way, guys, shout out to Noah. Check out his website, wisebi.co. Um, 
what a cool name and what a cool logo. Now, interesting story. So, of course, I talk about, uh, you know, my students with my family all the time. <laughs> and, 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 you know, so uh, my parents were visiting and I talked about Noah. <laughs> and they found it really funny, uh, the owl, the logo. Now, you know, because the funny thing is that owl, <laughs> it's hilarious. I, I think I find it hilarious. Owl is considered... Uh, like uh, stupid <laughs> in our culture, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but of course, owl is considered wise. I mean, the U.S. owl is the wisdom. So, uh, wise we owl. Great logo, Noah. Don't do anything. Don't change anything. It's perfect. It's beautiful. And of course, his mission, my friends. Uh, what a beautiful message. Data to drive impact. You know, and and read about him. Read about his story. He's been featured on our channel as well. You've probably seen him. Uh, so yeah, shout out to Noah. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah. So no, that was it's kind of funny. Um, all right, uh, Tiffan, uh, good dog, yeah, great. Uh, Jen is here, good to see familiar names and faces. Well, I can't see your face, but um, uh, you guys are saying I'm unable to open the files, Power BI files, and query editor. All right, so you there, I think you had you had emailed us. So if you're having trouble with one of our download files, I do want to help you there. Oh, I'm not sure, we'll, we'll see. So, off the top of my head, if you can't open the Power BI files in the query editor. So I'm not, I'm not sure. I think what you mean is that you, you can open the file in Power BI desktop, but is the query editor not opening? Or if you cannot open the Power BI file itself, then maybe you don't have the latest version of Power BI. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, yeah, all right, no one likes that. Uh, Prepri says, hi, I wanna enable a scroller on x-axis as timeline visual to show day-wise, date of three years. Can you please help me how to do it? So yeah, we'll hold off on that. We'll we'll uh, take out all of your questions. I'm gonna kick off with a topic that is close to my heart and I think it's gonna be, you're gonna like it, right? And, and again, even if you don't participate in Real Power BI, I don't know, I mean, listen to the concept and um, sometimes you get ideas, different ideas from different people and then you can take them and do something with it, right? So who knows in what way it's gonna inspire you. And after that, we're gonna jump into questions. Cool, so uh, Real Power BI, mm, let, let me just, so I was thinking about it and I was like, ah, should I do a PowerPoint presentation? And, and believe me, I have, I have <laughs> Power BI presentations for this. I hardly, this has like, uh, oh, you can see, can you, on that screen. This has uh, 87 slides on there. So, yep, I could step through that. But, you know, I don't know. These ones, these Talk Power BI, they're kind of conversational. conversational, And I like keeping it that way. So I'm just I'm just going to talk about it. And maybe I'm going to start with a story. And, and folks, I, I'll admit, I might get emotional. <laughs> I may not. But um, I was thinking about this as we were starting the call. And I was thinking, should I share it? Should I not share it? But one of my mentors uh, said to us, so he was talking about email, sending emails to your followers. And I asked him that, hey, sometimes I write an email and then I read it again and it makes me feel uncomfortable. And I'm not sure if I should send it. And he said, I only send the email when I read it and it makes me feel uncomfortable. Man, I mean, clearly that guy is at a different level. Right. And of course, what he meant was that, so I have this thing about the, uh, the iceberg life, right? We all live the iceberg life. Um, you look at our Facebook feeds and, oh boy, we're so happy. We're in the blissful land and everything is hunky-dory. But life isn't like that, right? And I don't want to live like that. I'm freaking tired of that. And, and frankly, yeah, you know, so I want to be the real me. So here it is, me, my real story. So uh, when I left Microsoft, I had this dream in my heart, right? I had a dream in my heart. Um, and let's, you know what, let's just, uh, all right, there we go. Ooh, cool. Uh, can I go bigger? All right, this is just me talking, right? So ignore whatever's in the background. Can I go full screen? I, hold on. Let me see. Uh, I don't know how to go full screen. Hold on, guys. We'll do this together. Uh, Okay, I can. <laughs> All right, here it is. So I left Microsoft. I had this dream in my heart. I've been doing Power BI for quite a while, and I was really good at it. And I had great results within Microsoft. And um, 
you know, I, um, I tested it. I mean, you know, so, 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 so yeah, I mean, it's, um, yeah, I left my job and I left cold Turkey. And of course, man, that was, that was brutal. Later, I can see, look back and see, it did have the advantage that I had burned my boats. There was, this is, this was it, right? So that did <laughs> help in some way, but man, it, I wouldn't lie. It was, it was brutal. I didn't, I didn't know like the emotional roller coaster that I would go through. And of course, a lot of it wasn't really external. It was just stuff going on in my head. So I left Microsoft and I had some idea of I'll get projects, but man, it was really, really hard to get projects. And, and I was, I was good. My skills weren't in question, but I just couldn't, I didn't know how to find work. And I, I remember I would walk by or drive by these companies. Of course, there's companies all over, right? I mean, Seattle Tech Hub, lots of companies. And I would say like, man, I can help them. I can help them. I can help them. I can help them. But now I thought about just walking into them and asking for work, which probably wouldn't have worked anyway. You know, the front desk receptionist would have turned me away. But I thought about that, but never had the courage. <laughs> Maybe it would have worked. Who knows, right? But never had the courage. And it came to a point where I would go to like dinner parties with my friends and they would say, hey, Avi, how you doing? And I would pretty much end up sobbing on their shoulder. Not not quite, but I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, this is not working. And, you know, do you have any work for me? And of course they would like, you know, it's like slowly back off from me. Um, not a good time, right? But of course things changed. So I feel there's a fundamental problem there, that there are businesses out there that need this help that need this help right i mean so small businesses on, on this page you talk about that and I'll, I'll maybe talk about my my love for small businesses and where it started but man they face really unique challenges now for you know what let, let me step into that like why are we talking about small and medium businesses so if you look at my work history i worked at uh hughes uh and i worked at uh, prudential briefly i worked at lucent i worked at aol washington mutual Microsoft. Now, if you look at those names, like Avi, dude, where is the small and medium business, right? I mean, come on, be authentic, man. Be authentic, be real. Uh, it, it was there, and it was in the very last part of my career. So, Microsoft, I was so lucky, I was so incredibly lucky to to join like a. So, Microsoft, you have to realize, and maybe in any company of that size is really a company of companies, and Microsoft was no exception. You know what? You can't quite see my bow tie, can you? Hold on. <laughs> okay, better. Um, so Microsoft was no exception. So I ended up when I changed teams. I ended up in in a in a smaller group of three hundred people, and I loved it. I loved it. Oh my gosh! I mean, I had so much control over what I could do. Were the challenges sure, but. I could walk around and, and what I loved was, and I know now we, we live in a virtual world. I'm talking to you, you know, sitting in my bedroom or, or my Learn Power BI worldwide headquarters, as one of my students joked. And um, right. So I, I get it. But I got lucky that most of those people were in the same building, uh, almost on the same floor. So I could walk around the floor and talk to sales, talk to marketing talk to operations, talk to finance, run into those people, run into our executive team or leader, right? It was all, it was so accessible. I loved it. So, and, and you know, and, and of course it gives you more opportunities. It's, it, so, you know, you can move much fast and you wear a lot of hats, which gives you a lot of opportunities to learn, which gives you a lot of opportunities for growth. So good things, but then again, you do have these challenges, right? I mean, man, I mean, small businesses, often they kind of grow organically or something and they have they have like a lot of these systems like, and, and it's just kind of tribal knowledge. Oops, man, I don't know how I trigger that. I just uh, don't want to do that, right? So, uh, right, so multiple systems can be hard to navigate. There are reports flying everywhere uh, and it's really hard to put a single picture together. And that's where I think Power BI can not only help, uh, so I love this code, you can't manage what you can't measure, it can turn things around. Why? Because, uh, so if you think about it, man, these, 
a lot of times, large companies, they spend millions of dollars on these six-month, year-long BI projects, sometimes multiple year-long. And these guys, I mean, they can't quite afford that much money. They can't quite afford to wait that long for something. They need something quick, which is what Power BI is, right? I mean, I built solutions for them in two or three days. That's what I, I'm a huge believer in, going with the Agile model, right? So it delivers results quick, almost immediately. But at the same time, it scales. So again, Excel delivers results really quick as well. And I'm talking about the old Excel. So, uh, um, what was I saying? So, so yeah, so old Excel, you could do something really quick. <laughs> Excel is very flexible, but it didn't scale over time. It kind of died under its own weight. It was a death by a thousand cuts. Anybody who's lived in that life with Excel held knows exactly what I'm talking about, right? But that's where Power BI is different. That's what makes Power BI so powerful. That man, it's a robust enterprise scale system. So yeah, you can start using it with with a team of one, a team of five, team of ten, team of fifty, but then it can scale all the way to five thousand, fifty thousand beyond. Who knows, right? And hey, small and medium businesses of today are large businesses of tomorrow, right? So it can scale. You know that. That's that's great. And heck, it's affordable. <laughs> I mean, Power BI Desktop is free, is free, and it's an incredible tool. Right. So, uh, uh, so. And, and not just that, so the, the best part, the punchline, and man, I should add the punchline here, is that once small and medium businesses adopt it, now I've seen it not just with my own experience, but with the experience of lots of my students, that they can actually move a heck of a lot faster than large bar we have because it's easy. I mean, it's, you, you convince a few people, the management and so forth, you get them behind you, like maybe 10 key stakeholders in the company, and you have the full company lined up behind, like, yep, you know, hey, teach us, tell us, guide us, right, lead the way. If you have, have experienced that, um, uh, let me know in the comment box, right, if you've seen that, right? So, again, I mean, it, it, everything kind of snaps in, in line, and then you move full force ahead, as opposed to a large company where, frankly, it's even so hard to get started because you start talking about Power BI, it's like, wait a minute, right? I mean, there'll be like 10 different folks saying, wait a minute, especially not to throw them under the bus. And and they're they're well intentioned, IT <laughs> and, and so forth. They're like, oh let's talk about security, let's talk about the model, what kind of control. Oh, we don't want this to get to anarchy. Dude, um yeah, I wouldn't go into that discussion, right? So um right, so yeah, so they can move much faster. So not only can they leverage Power BI, but they can actually leverage and use it a lot more effective, a lot more faster than large businesses. So again, right, I mean they have the advantage now. Cool, right? So yeah, so that's kind of my love for small businesses. I experienced that within um, within my Microsoft small team and loved it, loved the opportunities presented, but also recognized the challenges, also see the opportunity the real Power BI has, um, you know, the Power BI presents. So so yeah, so that's our love for a small business. So so again, going back to my story, what I was desperate, you know, I was walking by looking like, I can help this company, I can help this company, but I didn't know how, right? So there are people, there are professionals who have the skills to help these companies and these companies clearly could use help. And hey, I just feel lucky that I'm in a position where I can, you know, I can <laughs> avoid the pain for both of them. So yeah, so real Power BI is Real simple. You like that? <laughs> I thought of that a few days ago. Like, real probably real simple. <laughs> All right, cool. Sorry, you get carried away. It's yeah, it just matches those business users with the Power BI professionals inside our Pro Plus program, right? So in, inside our program. Uh, so yeah, so uh, so that that's it. That is real Power BI. Uh, now let me share a little bit more details, just so you know. And again, this may not uh, you may not participate, but that's okay. Maybe this will spark some ideas in your head. And by the way, that's what creativity is about. Taking these ideas, sometimes disparate ideas, sometimes ideas we don't apply, right? And then taking a germ of that and saying, huh, what about this, right? So, uh, so yeah, so hopefully uh, this would help you kind of trigger that in some way. Uh, so, yeah, it's a model, simple. Uh, so, yeah, you can just go to learn, learn, well, easy, easiest way is just go to realpowerbi.com. That'll redirect you to this page. So, realpowerbi.com. Just go there and you can apply, business users, uh, submit your projects. We're going to select some projects. We've already had a lot of amazing submissions. Oh my gosh. Uh, there's one from Spain. Last time we had a ski resort in Utah. We had a freight company in Kenya. Um, I haven't looked at all of the ones. I know there's one in Spain, which was really enticing. And yeah, so we're getting some really exciting projects. Uh, and by the way, by the way, if your business user considering this, then uh, 
uh, the earlier you submit, you, the better your chances are of, of being matched up. We'll, we'll give preference to those, right? So don't wait, donate. I know the timer says nine days, right? So, um, uh, so yeah, so submit projects. We're gonna select projects, match them with Power BI professionals. And uh, so frequently asked questions, right? I mean, what people ask is, oh gosh, but I don't want my data to be public. <laughs> and, and no guys, this is not me. I'm not gonna like put all your data on uh, YouTube or something. There's going to be a YouTube presentation, but we'll talk about that. Uh, this is right. So again, so we're training these people to be consultants. So this will be exactly like that. This will be no different, except that it's free, and and it's and and it's free with a catch, right? And it's application based. Not all projects get selected, and again, submit early uh, to improve your chances, right? So uh, so you're going to work in a private one-on-one -on -one setting. Uh, you're going to have direct relationship with this person and and they do kind of complete an agreement to keep your data confidential but if you need to go ahead you know they'll be happy to sign an nda i do that all the time when i'm working with the clients they can even give you a template if you don't have one so nda is by the way non-disclosure agreement so yeah you can get that signed but but again they they already have committed to keeping your data confidential um and and they they would lead you through that all right so there's one thing that i had in my mind where I was having a discussion with another trainer and uh, uh, he was kind of asking me like, do you teach them this? Do you teach them this? And I'm like, actually, no, not yet. And it was kind of an advanced concept, kind of really advanced concept. Frankly, I, at that point, I still, still, I think I, I, I would have trouble wrapping my head around it. And he said, Avi, come on. I mean, you're a trainer right? you gotta teach them this. And I felt like my job sure is to teach people Power BI, but more than that, what's important is to for them to have that confidence that I can do it. And and you know, so by the way, folks, so I, I'm a huge believer in MVP, minimum viable product, iterating agile BI. I've started to like think about agile for my life. Like how do you live an agile life? Uh, last time we went on vacation, I kind of tried to adopt some of the agile models to make an agile vacation. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that some other day, <laughs> right? So, um, uh, so Real Power BI has gone through a few iterations. And of course, now when I look back to the first iterations, I feel embarrassed because we didn't have this model. You know what the model was? Uh, it wasn't this, right? There was Avi sitting here <laughs> and there was no selected projects. It was a single project, selected project. And of course, now when I look back, I'm like, that was that was stupid. That was silly. So uh, uh, so yeah, we would do one project. And did people learn by watching me do that? Sure. And now, of course, we have the recordings of that inside our program, um, you know, in the pro level, where you can in the, in the pro plus level, where you can watch watch me go through that project, right? Watch us go to that project. But wouldn't help them with their confidence. They wouldn't get the feeling that I can do it. And that's the most important feeling I want them to have because they can, right? I'm, I, I trust them, right? Otherwise they wouldn't be in this program. So, um, uh, right, so so it's important that they do it and that way when they come back, come out of it and say, hey, man, I helped this ski resort in Utah, then I can help anybody else. I helped this freight company in Kenya, that means I can help anybody else. And man, that feels so powerful, right? So, so yeah, so these members would be leading the project. What our role is, uh, let me see if I can pull up a visual for that. Uh, pulling Google images, let's see. Oh yeah, cool. So you know how, you know when you go bowling and well for, for they usually do it for kids but I I ask them to for guardrails <laughs> sometimes they refuse but they have uh, they have these uh, guardrails you know so uh, oops uh, I'm hiding the image right so there's kind of these rails and um, yeah there you go right so that kind of stuff so it basically stops stops gutter balls and that is a role in real power BI we're gonna stop you know, the project from going to the gutter, <laughs> right? So we always there for support. So I was actually working on uh, this page as well, and this is still in progress. So this is when you submit a project, you get to this page, and we talked about that, hey, what happens? Uh, your data is safe. We talked about non-disclosure, who does what? So basically our job is, so Team Avi, we connect the business users, uh, we manage any questions, issues, conflicts about the program. So 
I don't know, if things are not going well, then, you know, reach back to us, that sort of stuff. Uh, of course, inside a program, there's extensive training about Power BI, not just that, like how to work as a consultant and, and specifically how to run the real Power BI project. So we have, uh, you know, kind of uh, video tutorials and everything on that. Uh, we have established regular touch points for the Learn Power BI members participating in Real Power BI. And at this point, we have weekly touch points. So we, I work with my team, uh, Marianne, she's pretty amazing. And, and of course, the class can see it kind of on the live calendar. And through Real Power BI, we, we're going above and beyond. So we're, we schedule extra events just to make sure that every single week we have some touch point with these members, right? So that's uh, uh, that's what we're focusing on, and of course, uh, we have our um, oops, we have our uh, Slack channel where the uh, the current members in our Pro Plus program hang out, and uh, they have the support from ESA as well, which is probably even more valuable. Oh gosh, somebody's gonna have to teach me, or maybe I should Google it. Like, how how do I avoid ending up in the Squarespace editor? Anyway. All right, so, so that's kind of us. But then, of course, right, so besides that, business user and Power BI professional, they're going to work directly. Uh, and and the, uh, the Power BI professionals in the program, they have instructions from us on how to go about it, how to set up the initial meeting, what to accomplish in the first initial meeting, da da da, all of that sort of stuff. And then there's going to be a recurring meeting. And so, by the way, if you've never been in like a remote consulting, which is frankly, as a consultant, that's 90% of what I did. There was some cases where I traveled on site to a client, but those were pretty rare. Those were, those were rare, uh, right? So 90% of the work that I did was just as a remote consultant. So the way it works is, yeah, you set up the initial meeting and you know you kind of just kind of get the ball rolling. And then, um, and then you set up usually a recurring meeting. Let's say every Friday at nine, huh? how about that? <laughs> no, don't do need this time. Otherwise you would miss out and talk Power BI. Do it on Thursday. <laughs> All right, so let's say every Thursday you meet and you set up the meeting. So the first time you kind of get the requirements, but again, this is Agile BI, so you're not trying to write a requirements document. Please don't do that, right? Just just listen to them, just understand them, and then say, hey, what, what would be the first step? What should be the first step? And we have this whole, and actually next week, we're gonna talk about that. So we think that's, that is critical, choosing the first project. So if you go to my channel, and by the way, if you scroll all the way down, you see the upcoming schedule of Talk Power BI calls. So next week, we are talking about that, which is how do you select the first project? And I have this whole theory around it. Uh, I call it the sh shining beacon of light. So so yeah, so next week, I'm gonna be talking about that. So so yeah, so you're gonna be doing that. Uh, just say, yep, let's focus on this and minimum viable product, not this huge thing. Power BI is Agile BI. And then you set up regular meetings. So the first week, and of course, in the first meeting, you also talk about getting access to data. And of course, my students have instructions on all the different ways they can get access to data. Da, da, da is the simplest way, the, the way that I recommend and all of that, right? So you have that with you. And then uh, uh, and and then the, the, the rhythm is, I, I mean, I like it. So then you, you say goodbye. And then you, uh, by this time, you, you uh, or, or soon enough, you have sorted out getting access to the data and so forth. And you have the initial requirement, the MVP defined and so forth and then you start working. You, and you're working offline, on your own time, whenever you want, in your PJs if you want, right? Uh, from home, from a park, wherever. I don't care, nobody cares. And then you work offline and you build something. But remember, you're meeting weekly. This is Agile BI. So you check in with them, and uh, you check in with them, and you show them first your work. It's like, hey, this is what I did. And what I encourage my students is to always empower the client, right? So not just talk about, um, what you did or why you did it. So that when you walk away, they they know the project inside out. And if they choose to, they can step in and make changes or additions by themselves, right? They, I don't really want them to be dependent on me. And believe me, it may seem counterintuitive, but that's what is gonna earn you the most money because they're gonna love it. Everybody's gonna love it. Nobody wants to become dependent on like a blood sucking leech of a consultant, right? I mean, you know, it's like, oh gosh, no, if I hire this guy, I'm always gonna be paying him. No, you know who wants that? So they wouldn't mind hiring you for another project and they wouldn't, they would love to recommend you to other people, right? So uh, it's best in the long term. So yeah, so on these meetings, you say, hey, here's what I did. Here's why I did it. And I just, you know, kind of educate them as you're going along. And then, uh, um, and then two things are gonna happen. One, you're gonna collect the feedback 
and, and reorient yourself, right? So, okay, so you get the feedback and reorient yourself. Okay, so for this week, we're going to do this. So again, MVP, quick, agile steps. That's part one. And part two, as you're going through the data, something amazing is going to happen. I mean, you can have lots of questions. And I love that, right? I mean, you look at that like, huh? And you're going to discover something that sometimes even the business user doesn't know. So like, hey, did you know that the country is blank for 10% of the rows? And I was like, no, that can't be blank. I'm like, oh, well, it is. You know, so, uh, so you might have to adjust for that and so forth, right? So you would have a list of questions. Hey, I saw this in the data, this in the data, this in the data. Tell me about that. Tell me about that. Tell me about that. And again, what you're trying to understand is you would have this data view, but you want to match it with their business view. It's like, oh, yeah, we do this and that project creates this. Something like that, right? I mean, you wouldn't know about the business. So, you know, you're, you're kind of working together again in these quick agile things. So that's it. That's, that's it, right? So you go there, show your project, what I did, why I did it. You ask them the list of questions you had. You get the feedback and rescope, and then you go again. Then you work offline on the beach, in your PJs, I don't know, I don't care, <laughs> right? And then you show up again, let's go, hey, here's what I did. And of course, um, offline, if you have some questions, you can email them or something like that. With some clients, you might have, uh, uh, I mean, if, if, if whatever works for them, right? I mean, if, if they have Skype or, of course, for long-term arrangements, not for real Power BI, for, for other ones, they might add you on their office portal, add you in their Microsoft Teams, Slack channel, whatever, right? So, uh, but doesn't matter, I mean, email or one of those instant messaging thingies you might be offline as you're working you might ask some quick questions hey i'm stuck here can you help me out um and and so forth right so quick agile bursts and the goal for this is to create an end-to-end -end project so so uh here you know so this is again the thank you page if you submit a project you get to this page and i'm still updating it by the way uh so there's this principle i talked about it agile bi i talked about the first meeting oh shoot oh yeah actually this is there so uh, again i talked about this do not write freaking detailed documents. Don't. I take some meeting notes, but that's it. That, that's my requirements document. Uh, for those in the class, check out the stuff that we did with Kimberly. Uh, it's in inside our course. So right. So look at that, and that's the extent of my requirements document. Uh, yeah, we don't do not try to do something like that. So we were. What was saying? This uh, this is the key part. So if you took so the timeline for this is four to five weeks. If you took oh gosh. So if you took four to five weeks and then said, ooh, Avi, I'm done with my project, four to five weeks are over, and I connected to all of the data set and brought it all in, I'll be so disappointed. <laughs> you know, like, oh, shoot, you know, I failed. <laughs> I failed to teach you the right lesson. So that's not the idea. That's not Agile BI. And, you know, so companies come to me and say, hey, Avi, we spent the last two years working on our data warehouse. And now we're ready for Power BI. Help us. And I'm like, mate, you were ready two years ago. <laughs> All right. So, you know, so so that's not the idea. It's like, oh, yeah, I connect to everything. No, it's simple, right? You, you connect to some data. And again, scoping is key. You connect to some data, bring it in, create some relationships, create some measures, and build some visualization. Boom. And by the way, that should be done in week one. Usually the first model that I present to my client has either one or two DAX measures sum and count rows that's it and it's incredible most of the time it blows them away they go like what what right i mean jaws dropping the floor right so that is week one if i'm working remotely of course i'm working uh, on site then this happens in a few hours in the first day right so um uh so um blah, where was i so uh so yeah so it's so, so complete project so you get like a simple version of that week one and then you iterate refine 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 week two three four five so whatever you build, and that's what I like about Power BI, it's not, it's not a freaking prototype. I don't want you to use that word, proof of concept. No, it's it's a, it's going to be a real project because it's just going to do the whole thing, right? So again, it's going to be a small scope, and you got to figure out something which is valuable. And we're going to talk about that in the next upcoming talk Power BI. That's because that's important, right? That can make or break um, your your journey with Power BI, right? So. Uh, so cool. So that's uh, that's idea about Real Power BI. Uh, let me see if I missed anything. Uh, probably not. So again, if you're a business user, then uh, just go to realpowerbi.com. And uh, again, if you submit early, you improve your chances of being selected. So go ahead and do that. Um, and yeah, we would love to have you in there. And thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody who has submitted projects. We are working through to match you up with someone awesome and we will be reaching out to you, if not today, it's, it's Friday now, so probably early next week, uh, probably Monday, 
uh, you know, folks who have submitted, we, sh we will start, you know, we will start kind of uh, rolling this ball. All right, cool. So that's, uh, that's it on Real Power BI. Let me see. Let me see. Do, 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 do. Greg likes that. No, no prototype, no POC. Yeah, I just, just do something real. Uh, Greg is saying, my view is that we're inviting folks to revolution. Um, yeah, mate, I really think that this, this whole agile, I've been thinking a lot about that. Mm. Uh, Rajesh Kumar is saying, hey, I have some doubts. Can I contact you after this live? What are you talking about, mate? I'm here for you. You can contact me right now. Yeah, wait, wait after the live. All right, so, um, yeah, Rajesh, wait. okay, cool. A few other folks. So let me swing back to our folks on the phone. Now, of course, folks on the phone, if you have any questions about real. So by the way, of course, a very special invite. So of course, we have the Pro Plus members who are participating in working on the Real Power Real project. And if you go way down in the bottom, we do have this link like, hey, I mean, I don't know, right? So, so of course, right now, we're mostly talking to the business users. But if you're like, hey, I want to, I would like to work in a Real Power Real project, then yeah, click on this, uh, find out about our Pro Plus program. Uh, but uh, this invite is open to all of our students, right? So if you, in fact, we would love our students to submit real Power BI projects if they think that it's going to be a good fit. And, you know, one way to find out is submit the project <laughs> and, and then, you know, we, we'll, we'll assess that, right? So if it's a good fit or not. Uh, and we would love, and actually we do prioritize our students, right? So we have a special flag for them, like, oh, this is a student because we love working for them. Uh, last time, uh, Anthony Pihut presented on uh, one, of, uh, one of the students, uh, uh, Octavio, who who's part of this business? My he's a CFO at MyMD Connect. Go check it out. And uh, he has been in my Learn Power BI program. He's been a student, but you know sometimes you just need some help. And by the way, guys, so I thought about this, and maybe I should write this somewhere on this page, uh, because you know. So if if you're thinking it's already a, an awesome thing, which I think it is, I, I I'm pretty convinced it is. There's one more aspect which I didn't even think about and I think it came up when I was talking to a business user if you think about it if you're a business user right it doesn't matter what you roll in it probably you know about Power BI this is also a great tremendous way to learn Power BI I mean I can't I mean obviously there's great learning and doing yourself and so forth but sometimes you well, that's where you're stuck, right? I mean, if you could do it by yourself, you wouldn't be thinking about this, right? So you're stuck. You can't do that. Well, then why not look over the shoulder of another professional as they work through your project? Right? I mean, every week you're going to see what they did, why they did it. You're going to get to ask, ask questions like, oh, okay, well, what about this? I read this, all of that. Man, I think it's going to be like a mind-blowing learning experience as well. Again, it doesn't have to. If you're one of those businesses who's like, you know, I just want somebody to do this for me, great, right? And then you can just stay kind of uh, that way. But if you if you want, you can, you know, use that time, uh, to say, to learn a little more. And just frankly, even if you don't ask any questions, even if you just look at the work they've done, just listen to them, it's going to be a tremendous learning experience. Uh, and that's good. That's good. Again, or as I said, our goal is not to like become that, Blood second leech of a consultant. Is that is there is it really a impression? Do people think of consultants that way? I think somebody was mentioning earlier that oh real power BI, I mean they consult they charge so much. And um, to that what I would say is if I charge based on the value I provide to companies, I would be living on an island right now. All right, so <laughs> let me just say that. <laughs> All right, so no, we, we don't charge, we can't charge enough <laughs> unless I can work out like a percentage deal, uh, which you know, it'll be hard to do. Anyway, we don't care about that. Uh, we want to help others we want to lead with um, uh, yeah I mean you got to look at what value is going to provide to your business and when people get stuck up on price so much I always I think it's an unfair comparison an unfair judgment because they're looking at just one thing they're looking at the price and that's it but there's another cost and I want you to consider that which is the cost of not doing it what is it costing your business do not do it what, what is it costing you to not take steps forward in this, right? What's the cost of that, right? So I'll let you judge that. Cool. So uh, let's go to our phone. So let's uh, switch gears here and we're going to go to questions. So the folks, the way we do it is we take one from our uh, students and then I try to work on YouTube and we go round robin and later we open the phone line 
on YouTube as well, which you can join later uh, when we open it up by um, going to talkbarbia.com. All right, so, um, okay, you know, uh, we don't quite do this uh, yet. I'll talk about that maybe. All right, so let me go on the phone. Let's see if there are any questions about this. Hi, or Power BI. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hey, who am I? Can you give me one second? I'm, 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 Hi, this is Mikola. Hey, Mikola. Hey, hold on one second. I'm trying to figure out how to get my, get my, um, uh, gosh, get my Zoom back on full screen. I, I kind of like Zoom. I, uh, boy, how do I do this? No. Oh, gosh. I can't figure it out. Oh, okay. Whew. All right. I had to stop sharing my screen. Pretty go full screen. Uh, and do I need this? Nope. Uh, unpin video. All right, Mikola, go ahead. Hi, so I'm having a question. I'm having yes. a problem with something that I'm working on. Basically, um, the data set that I'm working with has a lot of parent-child connectors. And what I did is I built out the path for those connectors using the path function, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, but now the problem that I'm coming to is that when I want to select like somebody who manages the relationship with one of these groups, that there are more multiple names under there. So then it defaults to putting in the first or last name, right? Those are the only two options when dragging in a text field. So hold on, let me see. So uh, yeah, this is so this is pretty standard. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let me explain a little bit just so the uh, YouTube audience can catch up as well. So what Nicole is talking about is uh, is kind of a parent-child relationship and fancy word, but if you think about it, the easiest is the org hierarchy, right? So um, right, so we have like the CEO, maybe it's James, and then we have uh, some executive working under them, maybe the CFO. Right and uh, you know let's make that Steve and so forth and uh, and and then within that person is um, I don't know finance analyst something like that uh, and 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 the way it's expressed sometimes one way to express that is is in this manner where you say employee. Employee name, employee ID, ID, and manager ID. So you say employee name is James, employee ID is 001, and that one doesn't have a manager ID because it's uh, is the CEO. And then Steve has employee ID 002, manager ID is going to be 001, and then Joanne is going to have maybe 003, manager ID is going to be 002, something like that. So, uh, so we call you have something like that. Is it employee or hierarchy or is it something else? What is a parent child? Just curious. Um, it's basically um, companies that we work with. Okay. Um, companies that you work with. Uh, to do... So there would be like a head a conglomerate and then companies underneath them, right? Okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, okay, so okay, perfect. Yep, yep. I'm flashing back to my Microsoft days. Yep. So, so uh, in 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 this case, it is a hierarchy of companies. So, so I say a big conglomerate. So, um, yeah, um, I'm I'm trying to. Okay, cool. So it could be. Mm, uh, let's say Microsoft, but then maybe you have specific relationships with Microsoft. Uh, um, and then there would be a uh, like right? person who owns that relationship, right? There would be a relationship manager. That's the idea. Yeah. Is it is it like a kind of a, a sales kind of thing? Like a, yeah, it's a sales account, thing. account manager. Okay, got it. Perfect. Uh, uh, by the way, um, yes. I definitely believe in networking. 
Uh, one of my favorite quotes is, your net worth is your network. And so if you are in this domain, man, uh, uh, connect to, connect to uh, <laughs> Manuel Fuentes at Label Master. And again, obviously, it's just a suggestion, <laughs> right? So he has been featured on the YouTube channel. He had a pretty good session. And these guys are doing some really cool and interesting things driving this sales and marketing organization forward. Uh, so for others, uh, folks, uh, go check out, to go check out on my channel. There's a search box on there if you go to the channel page and just search for... I don't know what uh, Manuel or sales let's try sales marketing maybe oh yeah there we go so really active growth in sales and marketing and um, yep yeah, so you can you know kind of check out the talk that way you kind of know the person and and uh, reach out with them so and yeah they're they're in their learn part of your family cool back to the topic so uh, sales account manager got it Microsoft Latin Microsoft uh, APAC some, something like that so got it so you have this hierarchy and then you flattened it using path function. I got that. But yeah. then something is not working, which is what? Um, sorry, the YouTube video is a bit late. I'm also watching that. I can only yeah. see based on the... Yeah, yeah hold on. Let me... What you're typing in, but oh, okay. um, you had the table down there? Yeah, let me see if I can get this share, share back on. So share <laughs> screen to share. Okay. Yeah. So at the bottom, you would have the manager ID, right? Yeah, so I would have some, oh, well, so in your case, so let's redo this table. Uh, uh, so, so interesting, so actually, I, I think I'm, I'm not really sure, let's see if, uh, so in your case, actually, let me, let me do this. So there is a hierarchy, right? So let's yes. make this one. And then there's an assignment, right? So in my mind, those are like separate things. Do they live in the same table? I don't know yet. And that might be one of those decision point things I already talked about. So let's say, so it's gonna have company, uh, company ID, customer ID, something like that, right? So company, yeah. customer ID. Um, so there'll be company ID and uh, then company um, name and then it's like a parent company id actually let's do it the same way company name company id parent company id so it'll be you know it'll be like microsoft lat m uh 002 parent company 001 uh, let's do this above yeah and, and then there would also microsoft. be a relationship owner column like that would be the last one right something like that so uh, four and here's zero zero one yeah it'll, it'll all be zero zero one and, yeah and 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 we could yeah i guess we could um and then they would all have a different relationship owner so somebody would own the relationship with microsoft um and then the regional director in latin america would own that region would, would own that relationship um and then same in emea and apac Okay, so so at Microsoft level, there would be somebody who owns that, right? Yeah. So let's say James and Lat M is uh, let's give it to Joanne and Mia. Let's give it to Sam and a back let's and then, to Laura. Okay, got it. Yeah, precisely. Mm -hmm. um, but then basically, once it's all flattened right. out, yeah, using the path function and the yeah. path function, yeah. Um, I basically get columns with the hierarchy, right? Yeah. Going from left to right for each of these. Um, That's right, yeah. The trouble is showing the relationship owner at each level of the hierarchy in a matrix. Yeah. Got um, it. So that's, and I'm wondering, so what I did, what I did build out is I, I use the selected value so that if there is only one relationship owner, yeah. so the person who owns the head organization owns all of the subsidiaries as well, it shows that person that name. Otherwise, it shows multiple owners. But I'm wondering if there's a way, if instead of showing 
multiple owners to show the owner who owns the most names or ah uh, okay or the owner who yeah. um okay Let, let's see so let's see so um it's, uh, you wouldn't happen to have a, a sample file we can use would you uh, and frankly um, i'm not even sure if it would help but i guess i would ask um i think i could not really um okay no worries and again as i said i don't i don't know if that would help us but uh, so folks the way you flatten it out is using the path path function and imagine like a deep org hierarchy obviously microsoft had you know, 100,000 people working for them at that point uh maybe it's the same now uh so you know it's a deep hierarchy so so you start with uh, i don't know employee level one employee level two three four five six seven eight and of course employee level one would be satya right so for anybody it will be satya and then like oh level two is this level three is that and so forth right so you you get that do the hierarchy imagine uh, 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 right so so path function flattens it out and 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 that's uh that's a path function is only needed so frankly path function I, it is not integral to this thought process i think uh, that's the way i'm thinking because that's just a way to get to the hierarchy so if you ignore all of that, so I'm talking right now to the YouTube audience, everybody has a hierarchy, right? I mean, our, our, um, uh, our uh, country, state, zip code, our AdventureWorks has it, right? So hierarchies always exist, always exist. Mm, and and, and it's, just, it's just that in our case, we are getting to it through a parent-child hierarchy. So actually, you know what, uh, uh, Nicole, I just kind of realized that. So I'm wondering if, if I can if I can kind of change that and ignore all of this path child stuff, parent child stuff. So what if it was country state, country state? I don't know. Maybe that would help me think about it. So, 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 or, or let's let's stick with this. Okay. So what you're saying is that you show. So wait. So when you know. So I don't. I don't fully understand so let's see this one is going to yeah say so those would all be microsoft and, and then the other ones would be this would be microsoft and this would be on the right yes. actually so microsoft level two i don't do you leave it blank um i did use if blank revert to the one before oh uh, okay fair enough right so, so then so, so that it doesn't come up blank when you expand the matrix yeah perfect so let's see so when you would expand Microsoft, it would say like how much business you do with Microsoft and then for each of its parts, right? Okay, cool. And so we have, all right. So, so, and you're showing it in matrix, you said? Yes. And you're trying to show the person account manager relationship owner. Yes. So in this case, APAC, me and LATAM are working, right? They they wouldn't have any trouble. Yeah, that's correct. But, but we're the top level Microsoft, yeah. not but the no. one above it with the four beside the name. Yeah. When it would just say the first or last. Well, or the, in in your case, is there somebody assigned at that level, or there's no James? Yes, there there would be a James. Yeah. Well, then shouldn't you just show James? Why would you care about anybody else? Right. I, think, um, I mean, if you ask me, both of these should show James. And and this usually wouldn't like actually show up in the data. Right. I mean, the table says so Microsoft. The way that I so the way that I pull it into the matrix is I'll pull company level one and drop that into the rows, right? And then I'll pull yeah. company level two and put it below it. Yeah. So then they, they all of the companies have the same company level one. And then Power BI will only let me pull first or last. <laughs> kind of get what I'm saying or? Um, man. So of course you, you've seen my progression here. <laughs> I went from word to Excel and I'm thinking I, I maybe yeah, do not. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's okay. Oh, okay. So, um, so, so, so let's, let's do this. Let's, let's change this so that this is, um, report layout tablet form. So yeah, so we have company level one, company level two, right? And, and, and then you're yeah. trying to add 
so if you add when you pull in the name relationship so owner just, yeah if you pull in the relationship owner oh oh i think i i know what's going on so it, it so it probably okay cool let's uh let's try it i'm not really sure how this would work here um um uh, design yeah. and so so now it's yeah it would need to be so, in so tabular it, form i believe yeah so this is it, it, this oh gosh so um it, Oh man. Uh, hold yeah, on so a when so... you branch it out like this, it does work, actually. Mm. So it's not the totals and subtotals, it's the report layout, and then you would go to tabular. Um, yeah, all right. Hold on. Let me, let me launch the desktop. And so. It doesn't show it at the micros at the company level one level. Is that what's happening? So it would. So if you go to design, I believe. Oh, in here? On the table and you go to design, yeah. Yeah. And then you report layout report in the layout. top corner, yeah. And then you can put in show in tabular form, I think, or show in compact form. I don't know which one it is. Oh, uh, yeah. So this one is compact. Yeah. So yeah, then I would do this. And then pull in her name, and then the. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. Got it. All right. So because if not, by... the data set gets. If I do it that way, where it keeps on going out every level in the hierarchy, yeah. Then I end up with six levels of hierarchy and no space for the data on the right. Okay. Uh, well, Parvi is up, so let's take a shot at that. Table. Table. Um. You can name it Miko. <laughs> <laughs> Nico. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so in India, uh, at least when I was growing up, I think now it's not the trend anymore. But there was always like a formal name, and and by the way, my formal name is is Avichal. And in India, of course, there is another big thing about like every name should have a meaning. So Avichal is like I don't know, like strong and steady. So uh, uh, of course, I've shortened Avichal to Avi, but uh, but then you would also have like a informal name which your family would use which for us uh, me and my brother so my brother is Avirul his that's his formal name my formal name is Avichal Avirul Avichal and our, our, our informal names were Sonu Monu <laughs> you know so and that was the thing you know so uh, everybody in my family uh, would call this Sonu Monu um, all right cool so we got the data and now we're ready to rock and roll I'm gonna add a matrix there I'm gonna change the size here yeah, that's oh, actually, exactly you can't. Okay, cool. what my matrix Say looks again? like. It's, that's exactly what my matrix looks like. Okay. I mean, what well, you had built out another page, it was... All right, all right, so great. So um, maybe, oh shoot, rows, yeah, rows. Got it, and then come to level two. And while that's working, I want to get it, get us out of. Uh, oh, oops, let's keep it small. Uh, this font size. Okay, perfect. So, and here. Are you using the plus minus icons? I am. Yes. Okay, so we we got this, and now I wanna I wanna get the assigned person relationship yes. owner. So c can I drag it here? That would be weird. Um. No, you yeah. put it in the in the values in the values, yeah. So, but then then that does this. But then, so what it does is it'll pull first relationship owner, right? Yeah. First, uh, first alphabetically, which in this case happens to be right. Oh, okay. I see. You get what I I'm see. saying, and so see. what I did do is I built out a selected value. So there's if there's only one selected value it will show the name, the owner name. If not, it'll say multiple owners, but that's not ideal. Um, you would rather, uh, you would huge rather, organization. you would rather show all of, the, so, you know, so let's take it step by step, right? So actually you, yeah. by the way, uh, kudos mates on making the progress you have so far, right? So really good. So, uh, so, so firstly, uh, the default was uh, first non blank and that 
kind of works, but it doesn't. You recognize that. Again, kudos to you. And then you said, no, no, no. If uh, And now you're doing a selected value. And it's saying, uh, so if, if, if one value, uh, show it. Otherwise, it, uh, and I don't know, maybe I misheard you. You were actually, sh are you showing the words multiple something? Yeah, that's right. Multiple. Yeah, multiple, in this case, multiple owners or multiple, multiple values. Owners. Perfect. Uh, but now you want to take it up a notch and you want to maybe show all of their names? Either all of their names or the right name at a given level. Um, or or um, maybe select based on something else. And, and I heard you early, say it earlier, which was like the majority or something like that, right? Or yes. right, yeah. So that part is of course tricky. It's tricky not necessarily because of Power BI, because frankly we would need to define that, right? I mean, I don't quite fit in my head like what does that mean? What does that look like? We might have to look at some sample data and so forth, right? So select based on some criteria, um, majority owner, something like that. Or, or the yeah. And my other thought, the very perfect one would be to select. Um, the owner where um, company name equals level one or level two or level three, right? So where do they match? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So but that's I, I, really I, difficult. Okay. Well, well, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Actually, that that I, I'm, I'm feeling pulled towards that one. Select owner based on company level one and all right so let's look at our data set and we might have to introduce some complexity so it's um so which so you're saying which value is wrong in your case is it this one or is it the the lower one it's the top one it's okay. the one beside yourself got it so uh, so yes yeah, so if you look at this one uh first yes so that were first. last okay. example so would if be wrong. we right. go back and change the data and i'm not really sure that first non-blank operates alphabetically. I, it might operate based on the data source order. That's a good time to test that. So I'm going to go in and change that to something, Zoe. And then I, my theory is that it's still going to show Zoe because it occurs first in the data set. I might be wrong. <laughs> we'll see. So, uh, so now it's Zoe. So it's not alphabetically the first one. But let's go over there, and uh, my get, get bet is that it's still gonna show Zoe over there. No, it didn't. <laughs> okay, I'm wrong. <laughs> Joanna. So it is alphabetical. So of course. Oops. Yeah. Sorry. So this is more of what my data set looks like. Perfect. Perfect. So great. Right name. It's there. <laughs> we're, we're spot on then. Yeah. So okay. Oh man. Okay, got it. So I get your solution of. Um, of saying one select value and show that, but we would rather just show Zoe. Oh man, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I want to jump right into it, right, right into this. So, uh, so, so, okay. Just to just to be sure that this is the one that's that's wrong, and the right answer is Zoe, right? Zoe, that is correct. Okay. Whew. All right. All right. Oh man. Um, I'm super duper excited. All right, so let's see. Uh, I should I should curb my enthusiasm. So uh, when I would train uh, companies kind of in person, then we would almost always use their data set. And uh, I always enjoy that because frankly, they were students were more engaged and if they were engaged, it made more it made it more fun for me to train them. But because we were using their data set, sometimes I would walk myself into into dead ends. <laughs> and Man, it would be so embarrassing because I would be like building a, a measure and explaining as I go, and then it didn't work. And then I said, "Scratch everything I said, <laughs> forget about it." So we'll see. We'll, we'll take a shot. At it. <laughs> All right. So I want I want Zoe, yeah. but but I I can kind of see it. So uh, so if you haven't heard me talk about this, and I'm kind of talking to the YouTube crowd as well, is that folks? I have this theory of I call them uh, working pivot. Uh, reporting pivot and debug pivot. And I call them pivot because I, well, I grew up in Excel <laughs> and everything was a pivot table. Uh, but here, of course, you're going to use tables. But uh, the working pivot is something that you use just to kind of get your head around the measure 
and it has nothing to do with the the reporting pivot or the visualization pivot. That's how the data is going to be presented. But at this point, when I'm building the measure, I couldn't care less about that. I just want my measure to work because I know that if I can get the measure to work, DAX measures have the magical property of define use, uh, define once, use everywhere, right? So once you define it, I can slice and dice it, use it anywhere I want, right? So, uh, so I'm focused on kind of just the working pivot. And then I, there is a reporting on the visualization pivot. And the third one is debug pivot, which I always hope that I don't use. But hey, if I need it, then I'll pull it out and it works a little differently. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, do a simple table this time. I just kind of lay out all the values so I can see uh, Microsoft, Microsoft, Zoe, Joanna, and all that. And I'm going to turn off totals for this one because they don't make sense, I think. All right, cool. So, so cool. So, and when I'm thinking about DAX measures, so guys, uh, other man and uh, Miko, warning to you. So I mean, I might not be able to solve it. We'll see. But uh, I'm going to think out loud because in the past, when uh, even when I have not been able to solve it, folks have said that it helped to see how you think. So I'm just going to think out loud. Uh, so, uh, so when you are focusing on a DAX, something is not working. You you always focus on a single cell because that's the way DAX works. And and sometimes, you know, people are like, oh, I mean, look, this is showing, uh, uh, it is showing, uh, you know, it's showing five and then 10 and then 15, but then the total is uh, is se uh, 79 or something like that, or, you know, I don't know, 13. And it's like, it's, it's wrong, it's not working. And, and Power BI just doesn't work that way. Uh, the total is calculated independently of these ones. And it goes through the same steps, which are in my course, and I think they're on the YouTube channel as well. Look for the DAX uh, ICANN principle. Uh, uh, so I C A N I can. If I figured it out, if I can do it, you can definitely can do it. And and the four steps are incoming filters, uh, calculate steps in, place God, apply relationships, calculate the numbers. Simple, right? So so. But the key is that each cell is an island. So I'm going to focus on that. So I'm focused on this one. And what is, so again, the I can step, I C A N, what is the incoming filter? So in so this one is working right because the, what is the incoming filter for this? The incoming filter for this one is company level two equals Microsoft, and company level one is also equal to Microsoft. That one is not that relevant, but it is there, just just so you know, right? And on this this one, we don't have that. We, you know, we we have just company level one equals Microsoft, so that means uh, we have access to pretty much this complete table. And when you do first, it returns Joanna. Okay, so first order of business, I think would be to detect which level are we on. Let's try that. Uh, so well, let's go here. I'm going to stay here. So I want to detect which level I am on. So I'm going to go in here. You know what, might as well save this file. By the way, you can access this file and any other file we have ever created in Talk Power BI by going to talkpowerbi.com. Um, and a tip which I learned from Charles, who's on the call. <laughs> I was I was really surprised when I first heard it. But the once in a while, we award a, a, a gold star. <laughs> why, would that, why did I stumble on that? <laughs> have I called it something else? Gold star. Uh, gold star to questions which have three, which are the ones I love. And the, the question that I love have three attributes, which is they are real business questions, not hypotheticals, real business scenario. And second, they are seemingly simple. There's, it seems like a simple ask. Oh, I just want to do this. But they have some nuances. You know, I wouldn't call it complex, but it's like, oh, you could do it this way or that way. Well, what are the trade-offs? That sort of stuff, right? So that's a fun journey. So Charles <laughs> was going through our, 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 our notes and going through all the, all the gold star questions and, and so forth. So, you know, if you feel like that, you, you can. All right, so let's save this file to Talk Power BI. And again, just go to talkpowerbi.com to get access to our notes, all these files. Uh, 2019, uh, 0823, Miko. And this, is, this will say uh, hierarchy uh, sales relationship owner. Okay, so I have it saved. Uh, so again, first order of business is detect which level am I on. Uh, so I'm going to go to modeling, new measure. It's coming up. There it is. And I'm going to so say, yeah. What I tried to do mm -hmm. was create a measure which returns, because it's hard to return um, uh, text values in Power BI, but I tried to do a calculate mm -hmm. and then a max um, relationship owner 
and then filter it by um, company name equals. Um, yeah. You know, it sounds to me like you're, you're really, really close. It's quite possible when you see the solution, you would, you would, you know, you may realize that, oh, I, I kind of, kind of did it. You know, I, I hope I'm, I'm able to show you something new, <laughs> you know, like, oh, you know, I'll be this. Right. So, so yeah, let's, uh, let's walk through this and see, see how it works out. Uh, but yeah, to me, I'm definitely getting the feeling that you're, you're very close and certainly, man, you, you made good progress on this. So that's great. So level selected. So I'm just going to say is filtered. Is filtered company level two. Let's try that. So I, and I'm going to go back. Is filtered company level two. And actually, let's just uh, let's just for one. This is not the complete measure, but I just want to see oh, the results of this. And if I go in here, so yep, perfect. This is what I was expecting. So for these ones, mm -hmm. it's saying that level two is filtered, uh, and here it's false. So great. So I can use that to to check uh, and of course even if you have multiple levels you can you can have like a whole so if you have you know what let's just actually write it the way i would write it so that it scales to not just one two three but ten levels if you had to um, i think i'm going to try so that for that one is switch and the most flexible form of switch is when you do switch true switch true and you say and then you do a condition switch expression so and and then you do uh, lowest level first so if you had 10 levels you would start with company level 10 you would check that one first okay so is filtered level 2 um, actually you know what um, I'm kind of hesitating this it makes it seem more complex than it is uh, switch through. I'll leave that for later. Uh, that is more flexible. But for now, we'll just say if if is filtered, and we know the results of that. If it is filtered, then it is uh, level selected is two. Else, I don't know. Do we need to test for level one? Probably we do. Okay. You know what? Let's let's go back to switch and see how it works. Switch uh, true. It's just uh, another way to write if then else statements. Um, so if is is filtered company level two, then it is two. If is filtered company level one, then it is one. Uh, oops, don't need that comma. And then you can specify a blank or something like that. You don't need to. That's the default. That's up to you. All right. Uh, so Miko, of course, I mean, you probably realize already. Sometimes I speak to kind of the YouTube audience as well, so then keep up. Uh, all right, so cool. So cool. So now we can detect what level is selected or not. So uh, for level two, we don't need to do anything. But with level one, we need to do something else. Uh, so what I'm going to do is relationship owner. I'm going to define another measure, and it, I'll call it level one relationship owner. And let's see how I can make progress on that level one relationship owner. Okay. So what do I need? So imagine if I'm at Microsoft Zoe, I need to clear the level two filter. Um, okay, okay, got it. So let's try. Uh, so for now, I'm gonna assume that there's only one company level one. Uh, selected company level level one equals to selected value of um, what company uh, level one got it so that's that's one and return and this is not the complete measure but often when I'm using variables I just try to test it every step so my my theory is actually let's just add it on there see what it returns Cool. So in this case, it's just Microsoft. So cool. It's returning Microsoft. So I got the relationship level one. Man, I wish there was a way to make it smaller because I can't see my working pivot now. Th those are the ones which keep me grounded. Um, maybe I'll take a screenshot, guys. Hold on. I'll take a screenshot, put it on a second screen just so I can see it. And by the way, uh, that is another tip for it's worked for me. I'm almost a compulsive note taker now. So yeah, I'm taking lots of notes when I'm doing consulting meetings with my clients. I'm always taking notes. Of course, you can ask them, you can record the meetings too. Um, you know, keep it private, something like that. 
um, go back so uh, take notes and I take screenshots and I take annotated screenshots and uh, for that the tool that I use is Jing and I use it for taking notes for for myself as well I was using it even when I was in Microsoft because you go back and you're like whoa why did I do it this way so you know so um, yeah you can add like some commentary for yourself and say oh this is what I did or something like that cool so we're back here I got the screenshot on the other side and here we got the level one relationship owner I'm gonna make the size a little bit smaller I guess do we need it all right let's just keep going so I got I got uh, Microsoft but I need to really return who is the owner for for that so for that what I'm gonna do is so I know I wanna um, I wanna operate on um, Miko, the Miko table. So I'm at I'm at Zoe, but I want to go to Microsoft. Ooh, that's interesting. Who is the? So how do I know? How do I get to Zoe? Like, how do I get to Zoe? Well, I get to Zoe by saying we're company level two is the same as company level one so let's go back here so I figured out so let me let me let me just do filter now you can't really return a table so this will give an error but that's okay let me write it so I want to say filter Miko and if I'm at this this level then the table is already filtered to this one row so first of all I think I need to do an all on Miko so clear the filters and but sometimes I think of this this is activating God mode right because you say all and boom it's just every filter is gone and uh, and, and then you zero in so say hey all right so um, and then I'll say oh I want company where company level two equal to I'll just say the selected company level one Mm, I have a good feeling about it, but there's only one way to test. So, of course, uh, um, uh, let me just uh, test to see if this works, and then I'll worry about the values. So, I just said count rows, and it's kind of working, but then if I can say that, um, what if I said calculate, and then I said, uh, made this a variable, oh, sorry, a parameter and calculate, and then I said calculate, selected, a value selected value uh, relationship owner so give me that where level 2 is equal to this okay again I have a good feeling but we'll see oh shoot it didn't work oh man I, I um, select value didn't didn't work I, I ran into this oddly yesterday S there's something here so can I there's there's there are two how do we solve it oh um yeah I have a theory about this this should work but it doesn't so if you think about it if you think about this uh, let's go back so I'm gonna sit here just for a second and oh shoot wait what <laughs> what <laughs> guys did you see that it didn't work and then it worked I'm glad this is being recorded All right, that was bizarre. All right, cool. So <laughs> it is working. So uh, so cool. So now we we have a way to always return the level one relationship owner. And if you've heard me talk about measures inside my course and on this channel, they are Lego blocks. Right, uh, uh, Miko, I just want to check in, make sure you're still with me. So far, I'm on. Track, yeah, I'm right? I'm here. I just okay. muted myself. Got it. So. Perfect. All right. So and I'm gonna check in on the cool here. All right, folks. So uh, the so measures are Lego blocks and when people say DAX is complex I don't think it's complex for of course there's a mindset thing that I talk about if you think it's complex guess what it's always going to be complicated for you like oh DAX is so hard um, because my approach is that I break it down into small small problems that I can solve and then I just combine them so yeah I, I mean I don't know and are there problems that I scratch my head over and spend days spend months yes I have <laughs> but uh, you know that's pretty rare pretty rare all right so cool so 
if you hear if you think about this then we have all of our ingredients right there our lego blocks at any level we can show the relationship owner this is we're not happy with this one is not quite working right that's okay but then we are able to figure out which when we're at operating at which level and and then we're also at any level we can say no 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 i don't care where you are just give me the level one owner so we have that so right now all we need to get the final answer is just like an if then else statement so i'll say hey if oops uh, what happened there uh if the level selected is two then just return this guy right so level selected is two then return laura level selected is two return sam but if the level selected is one then return this measure let's write that so we're going to say new measure and so we're going to say uh, owner i'm just going to call it owner and just that if then else so if level selected is one then give me the level one relationship owner otherwise um, oh should I should have defined something for this but uh, uh, first non blank owner okay let's try that owner oh shoot Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. If level one is not. Oh, oh uh, what? Why didn't it work? Um, oh, man. What's the. Um, what is. Um. Help me out, Miko. Why? Why isn't it? What? What is the formula for this? Shouldn't it be first non blank? But uh, you could also use last or just first. Um, yeah, I can try last. I mean, there should be last non blank. Like even even max should work. Max can also return text. It's max is basically a, yeah. a last function. It can work as a. I'll try that. So give me a max of this. Oops. Okay, let's try that. Woohoo! What do you think? Is it is it good? It's incredible. Um All right. Yes. Okay, so of course the file is saved. Wow. I'll uh, I'll send you a direct link to the file so you don't have to hunt around. Um, yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, absolutely. Hey, mate, this man. Is amazing. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. Tell me, tell me about it. I mean, you know, for one, man, I feel I feel incredibly lucky to do this stuff. So, man, I get such a kick out of uh, real data. So, of course, the the irony is that, of course, my course I used AdventureWorks. <laughs> you know, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, it, this is awesome. So, so. Um, Folks, if you haven't guessed it already, uh, Miko definitely gets a gold star because it was such a fun journey, right? And and it was it was a straightforward question. It took took me some time to kind of get what he was asking and so forth, but it was a pretty straightforward question. Made absolute sense. The earlier the answer they were getting was uh, uh, Joanna was was wrong. Anybody could see it and would have embarrassed us in the reports. And uh, but it was a fun journey to go on. Uh, all right, so I was working on giving you the link to the file. Uh, so, so this I, could. Yeah also work if I have levels three, four, five, and six, right? It's just about building out, just building out the same measures, like level one selected, level two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have like the, the framework for it. Uh, so let's talk about, yeah. uh, let me let me put, uh, put that in the chat. And then would I just wrap ifs and ifs if there were like level threes and fours for yeah. the final form? Yeah. So hey, I put the link uh, to yes. the files, and of course, folks, anybody else can get it by just going to talkbarbia.com, signing up. And if you go there, it does have it, your your file is going to be in the 2019 folder. And actually, it might not. It may would it upload it right now? Maybe it will upload it after I close the file, but it'll be there. Yeah. 
and you can sort by modified date. Let me just try that. New or older. Thanks. Yeah, it, Thanks so much. Yeah, it is there. Awesome. Uh, absolutely, mate. Um, you know, I, yeah, this is this was awesome, right? So I'm I'm sure, folks, if you if you learn from Miko's example, just put in the thanks to, to Miko. Did I say Nico? Miko, uh, for this question. Uh, so let's see. Uh, just let's just uh, you know hypothetically you'd see that if you have multiple levels, what would change here? So I'm going to go back to my local blocks. Go back to level selected. So level selected, we already wrote it uh, with the switch statement, which is good. So if you have lots of if then else, switch is the better way to go. So you know this one is easy. You're going to start with whatever level ten, and then say level ten. So this one is easy. This one is already set up. But then let's go back to kind of level one relationship owner. Now this one is a little tricky because I think right now what I'm feeling is that you would need multiple versions of this measure perhaps where you would you would have level one owner level two owner level three owner level four and so forth I think I, I have a feeling there might be another way to do it too but the way it's set up right now that's what you would need uh, so a few different measures and by the way these measures you can you can hide these uh, from uh, from the reporting view because they the by themselves are never going to be used in the report. They're just being used by another measure. Uh, so when you're done with debug and all this stuff, uh, so then if we have that, then um, in in this case, you would you does it matter which level you start with? No, but you probably change it to a switch statement as well. So you will say switch level selected. Um, and if it's one, then level one relationship owner, two, level two relationship owner, and so on and so forth. Yep, so I think I think I think it sh should expand easily to that. All right, cool. Whew, folks, that was an awesome start. Let me switch back to the um, uh, da -da -da. Uh, so some folks were trying to help me uh, online in scope function. That's one that I've never heard about. Uh, so folks, uh, uh, so as I said, I, did I, yeah, I think I did say it earlier, is that in scope, nope, not that one, uh, DAX in scope. So I, the first thing that I build for my clients, that's usually just um, just uh, uh, sum and count rows. And I was talking to Octavio actually, the, you know, the, the, who had participated in Real Power BI last time, mymdconnect.com, uh, check it out, CFO over there. Um, and you know, he, he talked about DAX and so forth. And I said that, Octavia, I, I love I love kind of this kind of stuff. But I will say that even more than this, I love the simple stuff. I love, love, love the simple stuff. I love how much you can just use sum and count rows. But if you do it the right way, if you build the model the right way, how powerful that is, right? I mean, and maybe a few other things and, uh, you know, time, time intelligence, I love that, right? So I love those low-hanging fruits. I love the stuff that is hard or impossible in the old world, but easy, easy, easy in the new world. And and it's okay to go on this journey and peel the onion, as I call it, right? Where you do this and next step, and it's going to get more awesome and exciting. Let's not call it complex, right? Uh, and that's okay. But man, I, I, I love the I love the simple stuff. So, uh, so um, one thought that I had in mind was that, uh, man, I wish I could go back to all the all the models that I've built for my clients and just do kind of a histogram of the DAX functions that I've used. And and I think it's the bulk of it is just a few functions. That's it. So that's good news. I I think it's great news, right? And hey, I've helped startups and Fortune 500 companies and everybody in the middle, right? So and with just a handful of functions so it's not that much dax can you can you go more and can i can i run into in scope one day and have to use it sure but but that's where of course um, you know i also talk about um, you know the the uh, the push versus uh, pull model of learning right so uh, you want the core concepts the 20% of the core concept that will give you the 80% of the results you want these guys to be pushed to you Right, it's it's really hard to gather it in bits and pieces from Google and YouTube. You have tried it, haven't you? Right, and hey, th right, and th there's a reason people join my course. And of course, I'm not talking about my course. Just join anybody you like. Doesn't doesn't matter, right? Whoever you think can push those core concepts to you. But once you have that, man, the rest of the stuff you can pull it to yourself whenever you want. 
right? And, and there's stuff, that, right? I mean, there's no end to this journey. You're always going to be pulling stuff to yourself. But the great news is that if you have the core concepts, then pulling something wouldn't look like, ooh, I found this. I'm going to copy it, paste it in my model. Oh, dang it. It didn't work. Ah, I'm so frustrated. No. You're going to look at it. You're going to find it. You're going to say, oh, I see what they're doing. Oh, got it. Yep. You're going to copy it. You're going to paste it. You're going to understand what it's doing. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, you would know exactly what to tweak, right? So because you got the core concepts pushed to you, right? So that's how I think you should approach learning. I not try to learn all the DAX, focus on the core stuff. Once you have that, the rest of the stuff you can always pull to you. I grew up in India where there was a lot of emphasis, at least back then, on just cramming everything. And, 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 and you know, and I came to US and, and you're like, dude, I can have my book right there. I don't have to like memorize the book. You would practically memorize the book. So the show offs in my class, these were these were good kids, but they they would they would show off like this. They would say that uh, oh, you remember that that theorem and that stuff. That's on page seventy six. You know, so they quiz each other. Wh which page is that theorem on? So they would not only remember the theorem, they would remember the freaking page number it was on. You don't need that, right? And, and forget about job interviews. We can do a whole session on job interviews. And if you think you need to cram for the job interview, I don't think you need, I, think, I don't think you do. Job interview, a whole different game. But when you're doing your job, guys, Google is right there, right? So, you, you know, so you don't feel like you have to learn everything. Less is more. Uh, so I'm just going to check out uh, in scope function. Great. Uh, in scope, in scope. Oh, the condition is used, right? Can I be in a switch? It's true in the specific way. Is the level in a hierarchy of levels? Oh, interesting. In scope. Oh, there we go. Boy, that is, I like that one. But, you know, I mean, frankly, I guess you saw it in action. I mean, it took me like half a second to grasp what it's doing, you know. So <laughs> not to brag or anything, right? So, uh, got it, you know. And, and very well written documentation. Oh my gosh, where's the thumbs up button on this? Yes. Wait, how do I? Yes. It's not working for me. Oh, okay, cool. Yes, it did. Uh, very helpful. Uh, product category, subcategory. So this is saying sub, wait. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll have to go back and study this. Like, what? <laughs> it's not what I expected. Uh, there's a whole bunch of fun. Oh, yeah, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll study it later. But uh, interesting function. I'll make a note of that. Thank you. Let's see who contributed to that. That was uh, Paul. Shout out to Paul. Thank you, Paul. Mm, great. We love you. All right. So uh, so uh, as per protocol, we're going to switch back, take one question from YouTube, uh, see how that goes. Mm, and I'll write. Uh, so we'll say uh, Paul in scope. Ooh, boy. I'll, I'll write it here, too. Uh, Nice, cool. Let's see what else is there. So, in scope, and we have oh, there's, there's a whole bunch of discussion going on. So, folks on YouTube, if you have any question, type it in. I'm just going to scroll through the comments. Just if you typed it in earlier, I apologize. It I just can't work that way. It's, uh, the first in, first out kind of thing. It's just whatever I see next. All right, cool. So now it's coming in. Chandra Shaker, Deva is saying, I have a problem. I worked on a solution for one of my data sets. It has several CSV files and a shared network drive merged in the data set. Total size of CSV is over one gigabyte. Good for you. I did sort it and indexed and for my solution. Problem is the data set is being timed out when scheduled. System suggests to break the data set. Refresh is happening on PBI desktop, but not on service. Um, Okay. Boy, this is a tricky one, my friend. Mm, let's do this. So this is Chun Chun. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Who here has experienced something like this? Let me know. Is it happening? Why would it take that long? It's a paste. Oh, shoot. Well, let's try that again. Nice. All right. So uh, let's do 1038. 
dude, Shinsuke Deba, and he's saying, uh, uh, timeout when loading one GB of CSV files. So my first question to you, Chandra Shaker. Mm, let me know if I can call you Chandra. I don't know if you go by that. So Chandra Shaker, my first question to you is, are you using get files from folder? If you're not and instead not not doing, you know, get the files one by one, one by one. This one is can be a lot faster. Oops, than this option. I'm hoping you are. I'm assuming you are. But if you're not, that's the first thing I would look at. Uh, then pending is something. Right. So A or B. Let me know. Uh, let's look at the rest of the solution. So, so, so again, to recap it, I kind of read it while mumbling last time. And I said, so yeah, but you can read, read this thing. So he's connecting two CSV files. The file set is large, over one gigabytes. And, and he did some stuff. It's being timed out when scheduled. Right, so the refresh works in Power BI Desktop, but doesn't work on the service. Does not work on the service. Now, of course, let's just kind of sit there for a second. So why does it work on Power BI Desktop? And do you, what happened here? So it's, uh, oh man, come on. Um, okay, I give up. Power BI Desktop, but not on service. Ah, oh, mate, mate, six separate folders. Change that to one folder. Get files from a folder is a lot faster than one by one. I uh, that would be an easy solution. Now, of course, you might be like, oh, maybe they have different security permissions. Maybe different users are doing it. But what I would encourage you to do is just test it out. Just test it out. Even time it on your Power BI desktop. Time it right with the stopwatch um, of you know your current solution, and then put all the files on the same network drive, but in one folder, and then do get files from folder. Man, I mean, sometimes it's like one sixth of the time, right? So, and and Steve, I don't know if he's still on the call, but he can attest to that. I think he's gone through that, um, right? So, uh, so yeah, get files from folder from one folder would really help you. But let's keep moving on and we'll do, so let's see, so you can come to Chandra. Okay, great. I'm gonna six files from network drive, share network drive, six separate folders. Each file for an MB when you go to get data, was it get, get from folder from a file? Yeah, so Paul is asking the same thing. And how many rows do you get when all combined from a folder? Okay, got it. So uh, so yeah, so do 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 um Four megabytes. So this is doable. So again, get files from folder from one folder. That would be my number one first recommendation first recommendation. But, you know, let's just explore. Maybe that's an option for Chandra. Maybe that isn't. Let's just explore. Maybe some of you are in the similar boat, right? So, uh, so first of all, let's come back to it. And why, why is it Power BI? Uh, you know, this is uh, service. So, oh, oops, uh, why is uh, PowerBI.com, right? Is it not working? Why is that? Well, I'm not really sure what timeouts are there in Power BI Desktop. Maybe there aren't any. And if they are, maybe they are more less restrictive than Power BI service, right? So that's possible, right? So that 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 is my theory, right? The Power BI service obviously has some kind of timeout setting, and of course, this one needs to be very careful because it's not just serving one customer; it's serving many. Unless you have Power BI Premium, that's and it's only one serving must, one customer. But I, I think even in that case, it would have timeouts. So Power BI service would have uh, timeouts. Uh, which are probably more restricted than Power BI Desktop. So this will say, hey, I'm gonna wait for, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whereas Power BI Desktop doesn't say, you know what, I can wait for an hour, or maybe there's no limit, I don't know. Right, so that's the reason it's working. So we just gotta, and, and of course, there's one disadvantage on Power BI.com service as well. So timeouts is one factor. The other advantage is that it's operating over gateway which uh, could be slower. Mm, I'm sure it adds some kind of network time and, and something like that. So if it is taking us, I don't know, an hour to do in Power BI Desktop, it would take 
us longer could be hour and a half two hours so maybe that's one reason all right cool so sorting yeah so, so uh so yeah, so this is this is a clue. So let's uh, think out of the box how we can solve it, right? So possible solutions. So possible solutions. Oops, uh, didn't want to do that. So one is get from a folder. We already talked about that. The other is going to be you you break it into two steps. Step one does the refresh. Step two. And when I say steps, I really mean two files, two PBIX files. The first file, file does a refresh and, and that's it. Doesn't, no sorting, indexing, nothing. And step two connects to the output of step one. Right, so that could make it faster. Now, of course, you could do it differently. Now, once now the beauty about breaking into two steps is that you you have control over the step one. So let's try it again. So step one can be non uh, Power BI solution. This could be anything you want. This could be an Excel file running with macros. This could be uh, this could be APIs. Do, do, I'm sure there are other options there and so forth, right? So so it doesn't matter. You you solve it separately. Where step one, you you get the files together, and 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 now of course, man, if you can load that into a SQL Server, that would definitely solve it, right? Uh, and you can automate that. Obviously, I want it automated, right? So that's one option. Get from folder, bring the two steps. Yeah. So, so that's one option. What else could we do? And boy, a lively discussion going on. A million rows. Uh, have a premium node. Mm, yeah, but premium node would still have this column. Uh, is there a way I can control the timeout in the service? Um, oh, 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 oh my God. What are you talking about, mate? You got premium, you're in luck. So Power BI premium, you can do incremental refresh. Uh, that's what you would need. And, and of course, man, you're gonna have to break up your data. So if you're getting 400 megabyte files, it's probably like a big time range and year to date or something like that. And I would bet that it's maybe it's you're only getting new data for the current month, right? So you break it up into, you know, kind of uh, set one or all the past months and then uh, set two is the current month and incremental refresh lets you say that I only want to refresh this guy. And so past months can have, if you have millions of rows, let's say you have 10 million rows, probably 9 million of them would be past months and current month is going to be just 1 million or something. So it's going to be much smaller. Uh, so you can do incremental refresh. Mm, yeah, mm, I think or hope that Power BI uh, incremental refresh uh, coming soon to Pro. Mm, not sure. Uh, I have heard a lot of noise from people. I'm sure if somebody can find out, that, uh, go on ideas.powerbis.com site, or maybe I would if I get a chance here, uh, and find this uh, the request. I'm pretty sure there is one, which is requesting incremental refresh should be made available on Pro. And paste that link in, in our link, and we can all vote for that, because that will be pretty awesome. Why not, right? Uh, okay, let's see. So uh, 10 columns. Time out service, reduce column amount, aggregate if you can, do daily, hourly, secondary. Yep. So of course, one option is uh, I like man Paul. Paul is like rocking it. So uh, Paul's idea is is do something to reduce the data size. Do you need do you need data at that drain? Now be careful here. Be very careful here, right? So for one, don't go too far. Right? I mean, so I was saying 
don't go too far. You know, it's often very risky. So, oh, I'm just going to do monthly reports. Just going to do monthly reports. So I don't need daily level. I would now. No, I'm, I'm just making it up. I'm not. I'm not sure. I have no idea what Chandra scenario is, but I wouldn't do that far. But if you have data at data at exactly at Paul set, like you know, like uh, R second millisecond, something like that, do you really need that? Maybe you can aggregate that. Now, of course, for this one to really work, you would have to go to the 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 source which is generating. Uh, the CSV. Otherwise, you know, if you try to do it in Power, Power BI in the query editor, then you're making it worse. I mean, already uh, the simple sorting and indexing, which are not that complicated, are, are getting us stuck. So, I mean, query editor is an amazing tool, but the problem we're trying to solve, we can't solve it in the query editor because we're dealing with a different problem here, right? The size. Uh, so, Paul, thanks for that. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, remove, but again, if you remove column in the query editor, then I'm not sure that helps. Um, what is it? Last, last 20 weeks. Last 20 weeks. So maybe you can break it up so that the source systems are doing, you know, like does the data um, really change beyond just the last week? So maybe this is last 19 weeks and this is last one week, something like that. Current week, something like that, right? So, uh, so that could do it. Um, what else? I have a feeling there's maybe cool. Isn't it? I was suggesting several reports during the last week. You can then cross filter the reports. What else? What else? If we do separate reports, sort of last at this. Um, I think if you do incremental refresh, you can combine them together. A user. Yeah, so Paul is saying it depends, depends on, the, but, but I think, so obviously the first goal would be to get the end result with all the files are together and without the time mark, right? So and then you can build any report you want. And again, Power BI can handle millions of rows. It's, you know, it's, it's not a big deal at all. Uh, but if you can't get the refresh done, then you're kind of stuck there. Oh, oh man, I didn't even bring out the big guns yet. So the, let's, br let's bring out the big guns. So the uh, you talk about like how uh, so of course, mm, so there is a has anybody seen like a billion billion row demo Microsoft it's being shown qu quite a bit now and it's it's brilliant now of course it's um, well it's it's not really applicable to us not directly but uh, billion rows are possible right billion rows are possible but of course they use it with direct query and actually they use a hybrid mode um, I think that's what it's called right hybrid mode some tables oh shoot I'm, I'm forgetting the term for it <laughs> there is there's something in direct query which acts like a cache table but it is not called the cache table the term is something else if you can help me remember that uh, bonus point points to you my friends so uh, yeah not hybrid it's you know, in effect, it's a cache table. So basically, imagine you have a billion rows. You can't, you don't want to load billion rows into your Power BI desktop, but then use direct query. But direct query can be slow, right? So what you say is, well, I don't want to load the billion rows, but what about, um, you know, sales by by year and product, something like that, product category. I, I want to cache this table because people always ask this question. So now it's going to be cached in my in my model and for this question uh, the model doesn't have to issue a direct query it can answer it right away right away right so that is that is one approach the other approach of course so again one of the examples one of the you know craziest examples I've heard is they start not with one gigabyte of data but 250 gigabytes of data uh, and uh, shoot so I think the story is that it was compressed to a much smaller size man I can't believe I forgot I think it was uh, one tenth or something crazy like that so so at source in source if you looked at the file size well this this was SQL by the way but uh, you know if you looked at the size of the data it was 250 gigabytes but it was uh, compression 
help them right away. Compression, compression one tenth, and and then they. But the, obviously they were not using Power BI Desktop. They were using SSAS Tabular. So you can use SSAS Tabular or its cloud cousin, 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 not cousin, <laughs> analysis server. So this one is uh, cloud based, and and these ones, yeah, I mean, or refresh. So I, I don't know how long this refresh ran, but uh, we had. Uh, one hour plus refresh. It would go for for a long time, and sometimes it took three hours. We didn't care. Who who cared? We just scheduled it overnight. In the morning, it was done. It was done. Great. We're happy. All right. Let's see if we missed any corners here. And Paul and others were helping. That's great. Uh, how many other tables do you have? We don't have a bunch of other tables. Mainly these files. I need all 20 weeks of data as a requirement. Yeah, so incremental refresh does get you all of it. It it but it just doesn't refresh the last 19 weeks. So so you know, so so imagine let's go back to past months, right? So right now it is August. August. I I don't know why I check my watch. And um, by the way, I think I'm the I'm I'm kind of the <laughs> you know, <laughs> very few folks <laughs> who still wear a watch. Um but anyway, so yeah, it's odd that I check the watch for the month. Uh, so let's say you have uh, so in the past months you have January through July. If I fetched it yesterday when I re ran the refresh, do I really need to fetch it again? I do not. So I can exclude it from the refresh. I mean, I have the data, but I fetched it yesterday. I or, or the week before. It doesn't matter. It's August twenty third. So uh, I don't know, end end of July or August first or something, right? So. Uh, and then August is the only one that I include in refresh. So it, it is all 20 weeks. That's how incremental refresh works. Uh, and to compare the stock across the weeks and doesn't give you up. So you, you're going to have all 20 weeks. Screen mm, group to save space. I cannot group by almost all comes required. Yeah, so Ch Chandra is saying that reduce the data size isn't an option. But hey, I mean, for others who might run into the same scenario, just keep that in mind. Uh, so, man, I've, I've like uh, ran out of <laughs> stuff that I can think of. And uh, maybe there are other solutions there, but um, um, let's kind of recap. So big guns, that would definitely solve it, but you know, it's a, it's a bigger investment. Um, again, my first thing is get files from a folder. You can see the time cut in one sixth, uh, maybe even more, who knows. Uh, let's just try it, right, see how it works. Otherwise, this solution, step two, break into two steps, and especially this one can be powerful, where you can do a non-Power BI solution. We did have an option where we used Excel, which uh, loaded it into a Power Pivot model, which we then sent to SQL. And of course, this was completely automated. Uh, we did use some third-party tools to, to run this schedule and so forth, uh, because I'm not sure you can do this in Power BI. Um, this one you can. Mm, da, da, da. Incremental refresh, um, reduce data size. All right, cool. So, um, finds that refresh. Thanks. Okay, awesome. So, Chandra, it seems to be bad. So, let's uh, switch back. Uh, the crowd on the phone has thinned, but uh, that's great. That means, uh, uh, well, <laughs> you can just jump on, unmute yourself. So, let's see. So, we have uh, Amy, Seuss, and Mark. Folks, if you have any question, then go ahead and ask. Otherwise, folks on YouTube, um, go ahead and type it in, and we'll take the next question. And again, if you join late, another shout out for Real Power BI. Just go to realpowerbi.com, and we are looking for projects from small. We're looking for small and medium businesses who have discovered Power BI, who see its value, but maybe they're having some trouble getting started. And that happens, you know. So think about a car; it takes the most effort to get it from zero to ten miles. After that, it's easy, right? I mean, if you think about how much fuel is being consumed. When you're cruising on the highway at 60 miles an hour, how much energy does it take to move the car uh, 10 feet? Very little. But zero to 10, you know, zero, zero miles an hour, you're trying to push 10 feet, takes a lot of energy, whether you're pushing it or the engine is running, either way, right? So so if you're having trouble there, then then this is it for you, right? And uh, what are we doing for free? Well, there is a catch. So for one, we do believe in, in the small and medium business. We, we believe that they have been underserved Right? They have they have lived kind of a hard life, and uh, most most folks in small and medium business are very resourceful. They they make the best out of it, but it can be challenging. So I've seen that. I've personally experienced that. 
uh, and so they've been underserved, but they have a tremendous opportunity to kind of turn the tables, to kind of move even faster than any large organization I've seen move. Uh, and, and, and of course, the catch is that it is application-based and not all projects will be selected, but uh, the earlier you submit, the better your chances are of, uh, yeah, those would be prioritized. So, uh, so yeah, nine days remaining, but, uh, you know, yeah, don't, don't, uh, don't wait if this sounds like a great idea, uh, which it is. Uh, so the, the, the one person that I was talking to, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, say, obviously this is too good to be true. <laughs> and, and they're like, well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've told you everything, right? So, um, but again, as we said, it's, it's the catch is that, um, depending on how many projects we get and how many professionals we have who are, who are looking to work on these projects, um, it'll be based on that and how many projects we can take on. So, um, yeah, we would, we would be selective in that. Mm, so yeah, just go to realpowerbi.com, read through that stuff if you need to. Otherwise, just click the apply now, apply now button and just fill out the quick survey, ask you a little bit more details about yourself, the project that uh, you would like to help with, and um, it's gonna be submitted in the pool and we'll select the projects, match you with somebody awesome, and get back to you. So that's a shout out to Real Power BI. Let's see if there are any other questions and maybe we'll open the phone line as well. Folks, if you wanna uh, call in, uh, replace some columns with numerical ones. And so, mm, mm, yeah, what's the, um, yeah, the refresh time. Man, yeah, CSV is hard. There is, uh, I usually, yeah, there's stuff you can do in SQL. I'll, I'll think maybe some more about it. All right, cool. So, hey, I'm not seeing any questions or, I mean, Paul and Chandra are having a discussion here. I'm gonna open the phone line. In fact, for the phone line, if you wanna dial in, then just go to talkpowerbi.com, sign up. And if you already signed up, then you have the link to the Talk Power BI Insiders Club. Go there, call in, and you would need a password. And the password is today is real, just the word real. So um, for for the call in, and uh, so I'm gonna wait on the call a little bit, maybe entertain you with a few stories, maybe. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right. So uh, yeah, you can call in and ask me a question, just like I was hanging out earlier with uh, Miko and everybody else. You can talk to me, you can share your screen, just don't show anything sensitive. We, yeah, just, you know, but you can share your screen if you want to. Now, of course, when we're doing remote consulting or that sort of stuff, or when I'm helping my students, what I love about the new technology is that not only can you share your screen, you can show me exactly what's going on. Like, yep, I mean, look at this measure, it's not working. But I love, uh, with most of these systems, the ones we use, go to meeting, Zoom, you can take control off their keyboard and mouse. So I often I take over like, oh, let me take over and I poke around and, you know, edit a measure or something and I can, you know, kind of totally do that. So that's there. Uh, all right, so I got to think of a funny story because man, it's just 11 o'clock. What's going on? Come on, guys, ask more questions. Mm, funny story, funny story. Mm, I don't really know. Uh, a lot of ones I've already shared. I think of a new one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Oh, ah, well, so this is, uh, again, I'm a little bit hesitant to share, but as my coach said that, well, I only share stuff if it makes me uncomfortable, uh, because life happens at the edge of your comfort zone. Oh, you know, actually I'll, I'll, uh, shout out to Charles who was here earlier. You have seen Charles on one of our earlier YouTube, uh, talk about BIs. Uh, just go to, uh, uh, let me see. So he was featured. Uh, where in this one employee to power be a consultant mm, let's see do 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 number 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 where is he okay let's go to charles do we have a screenshot of Ch oh there we go wait no nope, no nope, that's diego where is charles no where's charles let me find it ah there's charles the handsome looking fella all right so um so uh i was talking to charles and man charles is doing really amazing in fact, he's doing so much. So let's uh, kind of timestamp it. Uh, 11. And I want to talk about massive action. Massive action. So my uh, my coach uses this term, massive action. Take massive action. 
and it sounds so awesome. I'm like, yes, I'm ready. Uh, but I realized I totally messed it up. I didn't like understand what he's talking about. Now, of course, uh, my coach has helped me understand that less is more. We are conditioned that hard work equals success. Well, my friend, if that was the case, then do you know of anybody who works hard but hasn't been successful? Do you know of uh, two people who were kind of equally skilled even, forget about hard work, and worked equally hard, but one kind of you know, went this way and the other kind of stayed the same? When you look around and if you're willing to open your eyes, you realize that this equation is faulty. Right? So that's the step one, that's awareness. And I've worked on that and I've kind of, you know, I mean, hey, heck, I've talked about this stuff, right? So if you go back on my channel, uh, search for the hard work myth, and man, I think it's one of the most valuable sessions that I've done. Uh, just search for myth or hard work or something like that. Uh, yeah, so I've talked about this, but it, yeah, I didn't, didn't get that many views. And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, by the way, if you like this stuff, then do check out my second channel, uh, Power On Now. And just go to my channel homepage and uh, Power On Now or just youtube.com slash Power On Now. Power On Now. Yeah. And, and that uh, talks more about the stuff a little bit beyond Power BI, right? Uh, Power On Now. Uh, you know what? Heck, I'll put it in here as well. There we go. All right, so that's my channel, and um, and and you know, so so I kind of knew that, but then I still misinterpreted this idea, massive action. So Charles is doing a lot of stuff. He's like, oh, you know, I started a user group, and I'm doing this, and I'm networking here, and I'm working with this client, and all this stuff, while doing a full time job, which is right. So it's it's incredible. So I said, Charles, you're taking massive action. And, uh, but then I heard Charles talk about on, on that, on that session, right? Talk about employee to consultant. And I realized that massive action is not, is not lots of action. It's, it's doing the one thing that's going to give you, that's going to bring you closer to your goal. But then I heard Charles talk about on on that on that session, right? Talk. Hey, um, uh, hey, uh, sorry, I had to mute you. Uh, I'm gonna get back to you in a second. And and by the way, do mute me if you're joining on the Zoom call. Then mute me on YouTube. <laughs> Otherwise, it feeds my voice back again. All right. So is is the one thing that brings you closer to your goal? But are you ready for this? This is what Charles is doing. It scares you. That's massive action. Are you ready to take massive action in your life? Hmm? Are you? I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm ready. <laughs> right? I'm in the same boat as you. Right? It's not like I'm sitting at the top of the mountain like giving you wisdom. Man, uh, <laughs> I, I talk about this stuff because I, I struggle with it too. So, uh, but scares you. And of course, the odd thing is that the, the scare part, the fear doesn't often come across as fear. You don't go, oh, I'm scared of that. That's why I'm not doing it. Nope, nope. <laughs> That's not what you say. You have, uh, you have a lot of, a lot of very rational justifications. All right, so, um, yeah, man. So kudos to Charles. He's, so listen, listen to, if you need inspiration, then just, man, just listen to Charles. Man, and, and again, I feel so lucky because I don't have to look far ever for inspiration. <laughs> All of my students. Now, of course, you've heard the amazing stories. Now, of course, if you scroll down on my channel, there are lots of them there. Scroll down. Where are they? Uh, we should move them higher up because they're so incredible. But yeah, these success stories. And just, just hear them like one and all. So incredibly powerful. So, guys, um, yeah, man, in my mind, you know, like, uh, yeah, it's 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 that what matters, right? I mean, that it's it, everybody's gonna have obstacles, right? I mean, and but are you gonna? And you know, so courage is not the lack of fear. Nobody operates in that mode unless you're a psychotic or something, right? Courage is 
being fearful. It's good to be fearful. Fear protects us, right? But still doing what needs to be done, right? So what is your dream? What are your dreams? Right? What are your goals? What is it that you really, really want? Right? It's okay to dive deep. And if you say, oh, I don't even know what I want. I don't know. I think you do know. I think you do know. But there's something kind of blocking you from admitting it or something uh, and so forth. All right, cool. So we did have a caller join us. Uh, so, hey, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself and say your name. Uh, to me, it shows uh, G-H-A-N-I-M-A, and I'm not going to try to pronounce it. And I, it seems for me, I think I saw you join last week. So um, I'm assuming you joined because you have a question. You want to talk to me about something. Uh, go ahead, unmute yourself, and let's talk. Mm, wait. Uh... Hi. Hello there. Have you talked yeah. before? I think I saw you join earlier, at least. Yes, we... I joined earlier. This is but this is first time that. Awesome, my friends. So tell me, tell me your your name first. Let's start there. My name is Ali. A L I. A L I. Oh, yes. that's so close to mine. Avi, Ali. All right. Uh, so Ali, uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, I work as a business analyst. Mm -hmm. And so I am from Saudi Arabia. Exciting. We do have some students from Middle East. Uh, mm. That's great. Business analyst, Saudi Arabia. Um, and uh, uh, what do you like to do when you're not working? Uh, I mean, just to have to, to study more about Power BI and these things. So. Oh, that still sounds like worky stuff. What do you do when you're not working? Have a fun outside. I mean, you know that Saudi Arabia, some of the area is so hot, so yeah. you, you cannot you cannot enjoy the weather the, all the time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially these days, it is so hot. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> but but otherwise, if it's if it's nice that time of the year, you, you like kind of going yeah. outside. Yeah. Yes. So in December it, we will be able to go outside and walk these things. Yes. Oh, beautiful. So and we can walk only in the malls or somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Inside the air conditions, so yeah 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 so uh so i'm in i'm in seattle and it doesn't get hot but oddly enough we have a similar dynamic so in seattle it rains quite a bit quite a bit uh so pretty much july and august are the summer months and they're gorgeous it stops raining and we kind of go crazy because you know that's the window the small window we get where we can go out and not have to deal with the soggy rain um so yeah, I, I, I get that dynamic where, you know, you make the best out of it. Awesome, my friend. So what is your question? What can I help you with today? Yes. How can we calculate number of employees that is will will be hired or exit? I mean, mm -hmm. they are the number of hired employee mm -hmm. and number of exit over certain time. Beautiful question. Love it. Yeah, so we can expect who is coming. I mean, how many space do we have to accommodate them in terms of accommodations, houses, these things? Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, Very interesting. Because we are limited yeah. in housing and these things. Yeah, so there is some... some um, um, yeah, you, you need resources for the employees, accommodation, maybe other things, and yes. they're limited, and you just want to be able to plan forecast. going forward for forecast oh. and the plan yes how can we how many we can accept how many can uh, okay so it's not quite what i was thinking because so, we are lim we are limited with the resources as you mentioned yeah. so we know, you know we need to know okay how many will be exiting for example there will be uh, employee that will be exited in next month yeah, but yeah. At the, so, okay. okay so we are limited with the accommodations and the, the other resources and how many is coming got and it, how much higher got, so, got it got it got it so uh so i'm going to make an assumption so, so for example in actually, this, actually, can, 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 yeah hold on one second so um i'm going to make an assumption here and you can help me if that's right or not so sometimes when i hear forecast and plan uh, they people don't have the future data and what they use is they use historical data to project and some kind of algorithm but uh, uh, what I'm hearing it, it feels to me like that's not quite the case for you you do have uh, future 
data in the sense that you have some record of employees and and and, and you know in your data set that hey this employee is going to stop working in september and that employee yes. is going to stop working in november is that right yes awesome and what about the the new employees who are going to come in is that data also in your system it shows that yep this employee is going to start in december this one is going to start in next month something like yeah, that yeah but i mean so okay let's say that we have now five that is higher or yeah. they are coming yes okay five or let's say 10 that will exit so we have yeah. five that we can accept more yeah yeah yeah. so you have a ceiling of how many you got it got it, got it. but but you have uh, uh you can see my screen right yes okay cool so let's make up a data set so employee id let's do a b c and d e and let's try that oops uh e let's try that and for this employee the start date is um uh, gosh uh, let's try uh, July, let's try 7 1 2019. And this one, maybe, maybe, um, maybe this one is also 7 1 2019. And uh, you know what? Let's just. Uh, 8 1. Cool. So 8 1 2019. And end date for this one is. Uh, After three months. He okay, will so, be. So 10 1 2019, something like that. 10-1-2019, mm -hmm. and this is maybe 11-1-20. We, we might come back and change this data set yeah. as we need. Uh, but then there is somebody who is going to be hired in the future and mm -hmm. 2019, and then maybe something like this. Yes. All right, so, and then this will be 1-1-2020. -20. Now, if... If I can use, and obviously we're not gonna have five rows, we could have 500, we could have 5,000, you could have 50,000, right? So, and and of course, as new employees come in, this will kind of keep growing and keep growing and keep growing. So yeah. we can have a Total. large data set. They will exist. Yeah, 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 exactly. Right? So as they come in and go. In and out. Yeah, so, and based on this, we wanna be able to kind of graph that or, or say that uh, for, uh, Obviously, we can do it for past months, but we can do it for future months as well. That, yep, uh, yes. based on the current data, we can have these many employees, these many employees, these many employees, these many employees, and so forth. And of mm -hmm. course, we can have like a, a, a red line or something. Like we can say that, oh, you know, we can't exceed this much. So if our data is, is going over that, we'll say, oh, what happened here? And we got to do something, right? So something like that. Uh, maybe find more housing or you know, maybe have somebody come in late or something like that. Yeah. So, um, so cool. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to point out, uh, so if there are students who are watching, um, who are in the pro level, that's the level we have, which gives you advanced content and uh, advanced support for that one. Um, man, I, and we're looking to reorganize our, our structure. So, but let me see if I can find that. Where is that? Is that over here? I think that, I think that's, I think that's, oh shoot. Yeah. We definitely need to move it because uh, it doesn't belong there. Uh, let's try it. Uh, real core video. No, 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 no. Oh, where is it? Oh yeah, there we go. So yeah, active, active employees. That that's the core of this problem. And there are actually three ways to solve it. Mm, there's one, which is uh, this one. Oh, this is just an introduction. No relationships. One is with an active relationship, but the DAX, oddly enough, if you have an active relationship, it makes the DAX more complicated. And then mm -hmm. there is a, a simple DAX here. Mm, let me see how much I can help you today. So start date, end date, and you just want to see how many are active. How many are active? Over certain times. So, I mean, now yeah. maybe they are active in, in what you call it, in January, for example, 2020. I would like to see, oh, now there is one that is yeah, yeah. still in. Yeah, yeah maybe there are others, so it will yeah. be over time, for over three months, the period that we need to see the data over six months, how many, so we can know that, oh, this is the number that we can hire over six months or over yeah. three, over one year. And of course, the data will keep changing. So the number will keep changing also. Yep, yeah, that's right. But the limitation of accommodation 
the resources is fixed so so far yeah yeah makes sense makes sense all right cool so uh so yeah i mean uh, let me see I'm, I'm bringing up a power bi file right now we'll plug in this data and see how far we can get but yeah this is an interesting problem as you can see that it's it can be solved multiple ways each with its trade-offs and and i'm trying to figure out what solution we would pick in this case mm -hmm. maybe we'll pick this one okay i like that one all right it's almost there <coughs> sorry oh there we go okay so we have our bar vi file up i'm going to enter this data Employee ID, da, da, da. Employees, oops, employees. Let's just load it. Okay, let's go to page one. Let's go to um, let's go to calendar, and let's do month year. Let's do size to. Oh, that's weird. Um, size. Okay, so, oh shoot, do I have, uh, I don't have 2019 in here. Uh, we don't have 2000. Oh, that's just my bad. This is an old file, so. Oh, okay. Right, maybe, maybe, and I need 2020 as well. Let me, let me pull that really quick. So I'm going to go to my calendar table, the ultimate calendar table, and say end of year. Is that gonna work? Oh shoot. And date. Oh. So that should give us uh, our dates. By the way, folks, uh, definitely if you have um, if you have a, a a date column anywhere in your data set, you probably need a calendar table. And I know there are some inbuilt options in Power BI, which create a date hierarchy and all that stuff. Just don't use it. It's it's okay, but it's for rookies, right? I mean, if you're really stepping into it, you gotta you gotta use your own calendar table. So on my channel, the, I'll get the ultimate calendar table and start there. That's the one that I'm using over here. All right, so let's see. I just want to check. Yep, you do have 2020. So now what we're gonna do is is so um actually let me see what the first solution was the e 
no relationship no relationship state election employee start date mm, okay let's try this one so we are here and we're gonna go to employee and I'm gonna add that in as a table as well just so I can see it come on okay there we go and I'm gonna go employee and I'll just say employee ID and start date and date cool so I have that now I'll come back here and I'm gonna go back and copy this one employee I'm gonna rename it oops all right so over here let's do new measure So we're here. What happened here? New measure. Ah, there we go. So active employees. Let's do active employees. So we need count rows, filter, a mm, little too much formatting. Filter employee. Let's do variables. Max calendar date where min day equals min where min date is min. So we got that. Let's go over here, return count rows, filter employee on, not um, max day. Oh, let's ignore this for now. Employee started. Why am I using it that way? Oh, that's really weird. Let's ignore this. So we can say filter employee where employee start date is less than max date, less than equal to maybe. Employee. Oh, we don't have uh, employee start date with the space. Oh, okay, okay, so wait, wait, so, oh, shoot. So how do we count active if there, oh man, let me bring that back. So if the employee start date was beyond that, we're gonna ignore this for now. Okay. Employee start date, employee end date, and okay. So let me read it. Uh, min date, max date, got it. So I want to go to employees where 
their start date has to be before the max date that I have. Maybe let me write it that way. Employee start date. I'm not really sure. Let me try it that way. Employee start date. I may get it wrong and then come back. Employee start date has to be less than equal to max date. If they started beyond the max date, then I don't want to count them. So it has to be less than that. But the and the end date. Uh, oh, interesting. In employee start date is less than max date. They started before that. Um, and their end date is is less than max date. Let me see. And if they started in July and ended in July, what do I want? Oh, oh shoot. Yeah, I shouldn't have second guessed myself. Is. is blank employee end date employee end date um, end date okay so this is not and what is this one this one is not So it's saying July, I have two active. Which one are they? Well, it's uh, A and B. And in August, I have three active because these two are still active and we hired one other person. In September, we have fourth active because we hired another person and all of them are still working. In October, we have five active. So this one is uh, oh October, October 19th, um, five, one, two, three, four, five. Um, yeah, there's some stuff there on the boundary dates. It's not quite working right. So, um, Ali, I, I don't know if I can, if I can take you home today. Yeah, I feel like I'm, you know, two, two and a half hours. Sometimes I start fading. Clearly, I struggle with just using my own formula. So, it's close. But there's something about the boundary conditions. Because October, I don't think you're getting the right count. Because these guys... Oh, oh, well, yeah, well, so October 5, actually, take that back. It is right. So um, because they, the end date is in October 1. If it was September 30th, then they wouldn't be counted. Uh, maybe we should try that. That would perhaps make more sense. Uh, so let me go back to the data. And uh, let's go back there. And the end date will make it the end of the month. That kind of makes more sense. So we go back to employee. And end date, we're going to change all of them to end of the month. Uh, 11.30. And the 
this is 12 31 2019 all right ah nice that makes more sense so july we have two these two august we have three we have uh August, this person is still working, this person is still working, this person is still working. But on September, we have four. So this person is still working in September. This one is, still, is working in September, and this person just joined. Great. And then, but in October, we let uh, we this one stop working, this one stopped working. So we only have this one in October, and this one was hired. And in November, is it the same ones? Uh, yes. I think think so well what August September October maybe what happened here August September October November which which are the two in November who are still working Ali help me out man it's it's been <laughs> end of the day here so who who yeah. is working which which count so September was right I think October. if you can select it, it will be highlighted the, the I mean just yeah. no yeah. this wouldn't work yeah this one is different Yes, uh -oh. pattern doesn't use relationship. So October, uh, this one is working in October. This one is working in October. It didn't show up this one. Um, this one because it didn't come, I think. Yeah, it should yet. have been three. Unless, what about in December? Yeah, so it's 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 missing missing some stuff. Oh gosh, yeah. You know, I, I think I'll have to apologize. It's um. It's supposed to work if I taught in the class. I don't I don't know why uh, if I changed something when I was copying the formula or or what did I do? Um, we're really close two, three. I, I feel it has something with the boundary conditions. Um, I'm gonna save this file and and I don't know pick, pick it up later now of course, uh, um, for those in the course, you can ignore everything that happened in the session. Just go in and, uh, you know, <laughs> look at what I teach inside the class um, and um, go with that. You know, so uh, I maybe made a mistake somewhere here. All right, cool. So, Ali, yeah, I apologize. I couldn't, couldn't kind of give you a finished solution, but hopefully it gets you a little bit closer. And again, there, there are a few ways to do it, different ways to do it. Uh, three different approaches uh, the one that i finally ended up trying was this one with no relationships and that's why it doesn't cross filter there is one with active relationship but actually that makes the dax a little more complicated and then there's this other option for simple dax so um cool i uh, um i apologize but i'm gonna have to leave you leave you with this um Thank you. I'll I'll try to get something out of this. I'm sure that maybe I can come up with something. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you know the the sometimes these boundary conditions they they get a little tricky. So maybe I made a mistake or changed something here. Um, you know. So yeah, look look at those. Just this logic that I'm using, uh, this not max date that sort of stuff. Um, and again, it's kind of working, but not working. So it's weird. Yeah, but the the question is not per month. This is per month. So it's always yeah. What is coming over three months? So should I combine it or or six months or something like that? Or use a filter that is relative date or well so this can this can show you for as much time as you have data for. So if you have data for all of 2020, it'll show you every month in 2020. And if you want to just show like one month, then just filter to that month. Like, oh in December, we're projected no, that, to have one in that, place. It's the total over three. It is not per month. Oh, oh, well, that's easy. Um, well, you just, you want to do it by quarter or something? You just drop quarters in there. So, and again, once you fix the formula, <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. it's working. So instead of like looking at a monthly basis, you can say, I want to look at it uh, by year and quarter. So you can say, um, obviously you can do year. So you can say over an year. Let's see what it says. 2019 oh yeah because we removed this from 2020 oh oh you know what I think I, I think I see my mistake there I see I see the 
problem. Employee, I made a mistake when I was shifting data. So this was supposed to be 2020. Oops. Aha! Uh -huh. I wonder if this would make everything work, which would make me happy, yay! All right, so October, yeah, it went wonky in October, so let's let's focus on that. Mm. Oh, phew, it's looking different. So October is showing three, which sounds right, because this person is working in October, this person is working in October, this person is working in October. November is showing three, because, yep, this person is still working, still working, still working. Uh, December it shows two, because this person stopped working, so December has these two, uh, this one and this one, and by by January of next year, only one person is working. Great. So now you can see that you can you can do, uh, you know. So again, m uh, measures DAX measures usually have the magic of define once, use everywhere. So I defined it once and start by month. But you can see, active employees in 2019, 2020, right? So and it's doing the right thing. It's saying 2019 there were five active employees into 2020. They're projected to be one. And if you want it to be by quarter, then you can do it by quarter. So you can go in here. Whew, man, I'm, I'm so relieved <laughs> that it worked out. Um, yeah, I hate leaving. I, I don't like yeah, leaving people kind of stranded. So let's try it with, um, with quarter. Uh, quarter. There we go. So, yeah, so you can, you can see, you know, and, and, and if you have data for all of 2020, heck, till 2025, doesn't matter, right? Whatever your data is, it's going to project to that point. So it's saying, yeah, 2020 Q1, you're projected to have one employee. Does that... Does that does that work? Does that is that what you were kind of asking? Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome. Whew. Oh my gosh. I mean, if I if I if I uh, drank alcohol, which I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> um, uh, man, I would have <laughs> reached for a bottle right now. Like, let's do it. <laughs> okay, that was awesome. So, uh, oh shoot, I was not supposed to save it on here. Let's do. I messed up. What what happened here? Uh, save as. I think I overwrote my file. I'll go. I'll have to go back and fix it. 2019. So this one was uh, uh, 2019, 08, 23, and person was Ali, and he's asking about employee uh, start and date, active employees. Woohoo! And that is our solution. Two out of two, mate. Not bad. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, man, I know it's it, it's it's. I, I feel like I want to hang out here for forever. But hey, school is closed. It's summer. I talked to Ali about the awesome summer in Seattle, and we're trying to spend as much time outdoors as we can. Uh, my sister is here. We celebrated Rocky together. That's a um, key Indian occasion festival uh, custom. So uh, lots of good stuff going on. So uh, I'm going to read off a few comments and then say goodbye. One more shout out to Beauty Power BI. But let's see what you have to say. So H Hans Kaliski is saying, I have a question about backend data layer. When discussing small businesses, if say a company has a single Azure SQL database as a source, as well as REST API, what choices are available? Hmm. In my experience, Azure services such as analysis services and data factory quickly become quite costly. I don't know. If you ask me, I am a huge believer in just starting with Power BI Desktop. It's free. And why even worry about the cost and everything before you even evaluate the solution? And Power BI Desktop is a great way to use the solution, not even evaluate it. It's free. Just get started there. Don't have to worry about licensing. So that's where I start. That's just my personal personal opinion that's where I saw I'm like guys forget about that let me just throw something up in Power BI desktop and of course what happens is that I blow them away with what I build in Power BI desktop and everything becomes easier right so the one thing we talked about the one thing the massive action uh, by the way I would also recommend the book the one thing one thing book uh, really inspirational uh, I don't know I, th I think I have a fixation with one uh, there's also a company of one book I also like that one uh, so yeah, here's a, the one thing 
right? So focus on the one thing that's most important. So uh, the line from the one thing book is focus on the one thing that makes everything else redundant or easier, right? So you don't have to do the other stuff anymore or easier. So uh, showing something, showing them, right, is so much more powerful than telling them or something like that. So I just show them using their own data. It's like, hey, here's look at this. And they go, wow, awesome. And then everything else becomes easier. Company one, uh, that's why it's a different topic, but uh, it's also a good book. Um, so yeah, kind of my quick take on it. So uh, he's saying, Avi, can we rely on Power BI for future for approaching economic recession 2020? Um, why think like that? <laughs> 2020. <laughs> uh, I hope it doesn't come, you know, maybe, maybe not. But uh, if it does, that's a good question. So, uh, so that's a good question. So I said I'm going to say goodbye, but I'm going to take that one more question. So can Power BI make me recession proof? Now, of course, if you heard me talk about it, uh, uh, Power BI alone, no, right? So of course, my frustration was that I started teaching Power BI, but then I saw some students get amazing success but others were still stuck. And of course, my new effort, the, the whole Pro Plus program, which is key in running the Real Power BI project, has been to solve that. To solve, to see, learn from my own experience, learn from others who have uh, succeeded in my program, and I, and I see and interact with all of my students, and see, hey, what what is that secret sauce? And I want to make it a non-secret, right? And, and you know, I want to teach it to everybody, and uh, say, yep, this is what you do to become really successful with Power BI. And it's not just technical knowledge. In fact, that's gonna fade fast. That happens with any technology, but you can, yeah, you can, you can, you can become super amazingly powerful um, if you do the right thing. So that's what we're exploring with this program. Mm, it's, it's like our second iteration. We got some amazing people in here. I still think of it as a beta. Probably this will be, in my mind at least, to have the beta tag forever, right? Because it's always an exploration of what can we do. So, um, so there are a few things there. Like I wouldn't go into it. I've talked about it before on this channel. So, and of course, I you know kind of teach that, and go. I'm going on this journey with these members. Uh, we're about 20, 20 people here. So that's uh, Power BI alone is not going to cut it. But if you do the 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 plus, you know, Power BI plus, let's call it. Right? So, um, if you do that other stuff, then you have a chance, right? Then you have a chance. So uh, there's this odd thing. If you look at the recessions, if you look at the 1920s, right? I mean, that, was that the Great Depression? Wow, man. I think it went all the way to World War. If it started in the 20s, that was a brutal period. And then, um, uh, what was the recent ones? I don't know, 2000, something like that. They saw something uh, interesting. Dep uh, depression, oh, is it still called a depression? They, they use different word for it, I think. Whatever, financial meltdown, stuff like that, right? So bad things happen. So, um, so in 1920s, uh, they didn't have movies. They used to have, I have, I think they were called the uh, dance uh, parlors, dance halls, and and they saw an upsurge. There was an upsurge in in this, and in 2000s, uh, movies did really well. Why? Uh, because when you are when you're kind of depressed, man, you need a break. I mean, you, you know, it's, it's, so it's odd that, I mean, you could be struggling to find food, but you, you want to leave that all behind you and yeah, spend money on going to a dance bar and just, man, that for that one hour, I'm dancing over there. I don't have to worry about this. Same thing with movies, right? So it's like, man, I just want to escape it. So, so yeah, they went up. I think BI can be like that can definitely be like that. Now, of course, that's where the plus comes in. So you're going to have to, when you approach customers, you're going to have to approach them that way, right? So, so uh, in fact, in fact, I would counter that when things are going great, most companies feel that they don't need BI. Uh, you know, in fact, I wouldn't put it that way. They don't focus on BI. I'm getting 100% growth every year, doubling. <laughs> They're not really thinking about BI. They're just thinking, cool, right? I mean, how can we grow faster? It's when things don't work, then we think more about BI. Think about it. 
if uh, one of your competitors starts, comes a new competitor or something like that, comes in, often companies wake up to that. If you see them using BI, if you see them, you competitor, thank God for word spell, word spell check, uh, right? That sort of stuff. So, so my theory is that BI is even more valuable in recession. It is more valuable, but it is going to be our job as an industry. And again, I'm you know the, you see the tagline on my on my on my page here, like hey, don't just learn, folks, lead, right? So it's going to be our job to lead, right, the business community and and guide them here, right? So when tough times hit, you know we have the conversation with them. Hey, man, I realize that things are not working. Da da da. Things are short. Man, you have a layoff. That sort of stuff. Now is the time. Now is the time to invest in BI so you can work smarter, right? Because, well, I mean, you know what's going on. So, uh, so yeah, so that's one. Um, uh, there's another another one, which is not quite recession, but it's uh, outsourcing. And I think it's, it is resilient to this as well, especially, again, if you focus on the plus one, right? The, the plus part of your plus. Don't just learn tech skills. Go beyond that. And again, we've talked about it a lot of times on the channel, um, so forth. So I wouldn't go into that. But yeah, I, my 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 belief is that if you do things right, then uh, you can be totally immune to outsourcing. You don't really care. Like, oh, cool, let them come. Good, good for us, right? I mean, so like people talk about Tableau, and it's like, oh my gosh, Barry has now I'm gonna have competition. I'm like, yep, you know what? That's great. That's great for the market. Yep. So outsourcing the fact that more people are learning, that's a great sign. I welcome that. But that 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 means that Power BI is growing, growing well. Great, right? I mean, and I'm gonna do my own thing, tap on my own market. So cool. So you know, just kind of my two cents. All right. So do do do. Oh, we have a query. Can I ask? Uh, so I'm in, Yeah, we're just about winding up the session here. So yeah, maybe maybe ask here. See if you can somebody can answer on uh, the chat. Uh, and uh, hey, Steve. Hey, did you have something to add? Hey, Avi. Sorry, I, I had to step off for a little bit, but I'm back. All right, cool, awesome. All right, um, all right, cool. So I'm just about winding up here. Sam, uh, cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna say we're storing files weekly and using Power BI report. How can we take one file which is stored last week of the month or first week of the month? Uh, that one is an easy one. Uh, so, okay, so gosh, I, I keep, uh, I can't resist it. 1151. Um, so go to, oops, um, so uh, go to select files in a folder and then and then look at a previous step which shows the list of files and you can filter there you can insert a step to filter files as you like right you can buy do it by text extension you can do it by specific file name so imagine you, you go to you go to kind of this folder and has a whole bunch of files but then you know, you go back to a previous step, and it should it should show you the file names. It will show you the file names, and there you can you can say, oh, I only want file which has the name Learn Power BI, or begins with Learn Power BI, or ends with BBIX, all of that sort of stuff. So you can do that. Mm, awesome. Bought the book, the one. Yes. All right. Cool. Uh, all right, folks. So let's uh, let's say goodbye. I'm gonna say goodbye, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Again, Real Power BI is open. Um, what would the last shout out I'll say is. So go to realpowerbi.com if you would like to submit a project. And we are super excited about the folks who already have submitted. We're looking forward to matching you up with a, uh, with a Power BI Professional Insider program and have them start to help you. Uh, and next week, we're going to do kind of a related topic, which is relevant to these folks starting on this. And we're going to talk about why is it critical to make sure that you pick the right project and how what are the rules and conditions and guidelines for selecting that first project to, to kind of guarantee your success? Because again, we talked about the one thing, 
And that's what I want this this one project to be for you. I want it to be that one thing mm -hmm. that makes everything else easy, right? So Power BI rollout, I mean, you know, it can be tricky. There can be some resistance. There can be different people have different opinion, da, da, da. There might be other tools in the mix. But if you do this one thing right, if you do the first project right, boom. And that's what I call it the shining beacon, right? It just, you know, draws everybody like, whoa, how do you do that? Can you help us? Can you do that for us? So we'll see you next time. And until then, power on, my friends.